Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video, but probably not the Universe Sandbox you were expecting as today we are playing Universe Sandbox Legacy. So the original, original game all the way back from 2008. And this is actually launching a new series today about the history of Universe Sandbox. So we're going to go from beginning all the way up to the present day of Universe Sandbox and see how things have evolved. And obviously, the only way to do that is to uh, play the original Universe Sandbox game. So I'd like to put out a massive thank you to one of the developers or one of the development team, Brent, for giving me access and permission to film with this version of the game as remember he said to make it clear as well that this is universe sandbox legacy this is not the current version of the game it's an entirely different game and yeah they're no longer supporting this version of the game so there could be bugs there may not be there may be we don't know but obviously anything you see it's never going to be fixed the developers have not or any interest um, in obviously developing or changing this game anymore so this is the game in its final release form so yeah a massive thank you to brent again for allowing us access to uh, play this. So without further ado, let's actually begin and start to look around and uh, talk about some of the history of the game and just explore how different things looked back in 2008 as that is when this game was first released. All the way back in 2008, all the way back in the 2000s, the late 2000s is when this game released. So uh, yeah, he gave me a bit of information, Brent. So he said the first version of Universe Sandbox Legacy, which is what this is, was first released in 2008, but it was not available for purchase through Steam until 2011. So obviously at one point you were able to uh, buy and purchase this game and um, check it out, but obviously you can't do that anymore since they have released the uh, current version of Universe Sandbox, or Universe Sandbox 2 as um, a lot of us know it as. So this current version of Universe Sandbox, so this game we're in right now, this game lived all the way up to about 2014, 2015 as at that time Universe Sandbox 2 was released and it replaced this game. So this game roughly had a lifespan of 2008 all the way to about 2015. So yeah, it had, it had a good run, had, a, had quite a long run there, good few years there. So let's go ahead and see how different the game looked when it was designed in 2008. So if we just uh, open up a fresh simulation here, you can see the game starts off in 2008, which is pretty cool. So that's roughly the release date of when the uh, game was out roughly. So around that time, I don't know if that was the exact date, but yeah, the game released in 2008. So let's go ahead and see what everything looks like. So um, yeah, I believe that it was only purchasable through their website as well, because as he said, the game wasn't available on Steam until 2011. So there were a good few years before you could actually get it on Steam. So I think you would have been able to buy it through their website at that time, or maybe you brought it on a disc all the way back in the early 2000s. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, there we are. So okay, here we go. And also please note guys, you can't access this version of the game. I was given special permission from the developers to access this and uh, obviously film with it. So again, a massive thank you to Brent for that. But yeah, enough of me babbling on about stuff. Let's actually explore the game and see what is up. So first of all, looking at the sound, we can notice straight away, there's not much detail. And obviously remember 2008, this is obviously designed a while back, but I think even then, for 2008, all the way back on computers and technology back then, this is really impressive stuff. I mean, obviously the detail of the sun isn't too hot, but it works, it runs, and it does look good from a distance. I mean, sun, obviously, there we are. So let's actually just have a full look at all the planets. Remember, this was designed in 2008, so let's just uh, give it the uh, benefit of the doubt there. Remember, it is quite an old version. Oh, look at Mercury. Wow. That does look right weird to obviously what we know now. I mean, it doesn't even look like a full sphere shape, if you look carefully. It's not a sphere. Now, I'm wondering if, that, if that's the due with the settings, maybe? Is it, is it like a graphic settings we can turn up, maybe? Um, I mean, the settings are very basic. There isn't many um, settings really to uh, play with here. So, show bodies at actual size. Oh, my. Whoa. Oh, okay. So, is that... Fi oh, oh, that's kind of made everything... Oh, my God. Look, this is a cool option. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. And he did say as well, Brent did say, if there's any features in Legacy that you would like to see in the current Universe Sandbox, that would be great to know. So he said, any, any feedback you see from this and stuff that you'd like to see in the current game, let us know down below in the comments if there's any stuff in this video that you would like to see added to the main Universe Sandbox, the Universe Sandbox 2. Let us know down below in the comments. But I've already seen something I want to see, and that is this feature right here. Show bodies at actual size. How cool is that? Look at that. You can see all the planet. Wow, that I'm surprised this isn't added. This is a really cool, neat little feature. 
I really like that. Why can't we have that in the game? Yeah. It, developers, if you're watching, please consider this. This is a really cool little feature you've got here. I mean, it doesn't really do much in terms of game practicality, but it's a really nice visual thing. I really, really like that. That is really cool. So show bodies. At, look at... Oh, so the biggest it can go. So you zoom out. Oh, that's... Look at that. That's so cool. So if you zoom out, got the whole solar system all in sphere. Ah. Oh. So you can have a little tease of what some of the objects already look like, but that is so cool. I really, really rate that. Okay, cool. Right, so there's a lot of stuff we can play around in the options here. So, so let's see. So what else is all oh, that's made my game really lag out? So what does that do? Oh my god. So you can see there's obviously a few glitches in here, but yeah, give it the benefit of the doubt. It's quite an old game. It's not supported. So constellations. So does that like light any on and off? interesting western so i'm not exactly sure what all of these options do highlight marks okay so that shows obviously where all the plants are so we have that in the game the present game at the moment project pass whoa so that's basically orbit mode i think projected paths okay so that's basically orbit mode so obviously we have trails and orbit mode um in the current game so okay so that's roughly what that is phantom sun what does that do New lighting system. Okay, so we'll use old li old light system. So what what does it does that change anything with the sun? Phantom sun. It must be to do with the light on the planets, is my guess. So focus on Mercury. Whoa. So is that what? So does that do any? Interesting. Okay. Oh. Okay. So you can change the background as well. So. Okay, so this is like a brightness bar. Okay, so that's what that does. Okay, interesting. Phantom Sun. So that's like almost like changing the luminosity in the uh, normal game. So, okay, there we are. So I'm not sure what all those do. So uh, grid mode. Obviously, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So if you zoom out, you get grid mode, which is quite cool, actually. Grid mode doesn't look like that in the uh, present version. That's really cool. Um, okay, so there's different backgrounds as well. So let's have a little uh, look in that. Let's turn off grid. Okay. Right, so background. So obviously you got Milky Way, and obviously the background itself it looks a whole lot more colourful than what we uh, the, like the current uh, Universe Sandbox game. But obviously I think that's a little unrealistically colourful. I have to say there, um, Milky Way. So you get stars, microwave. Whoa, ho, ho, oh wow, we okay. So it's like that's a pretty cool little leaf thing. That'd be quite cool to have that in the game as well in the normal game. But yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So microwave. So that's like background radiation stuff sort of there. Um, microwave and white so obviously that's pretty self-explanatory there as well but yeah okay so we'll go back to milky way okay so create impact marks create dust accurate uh what's this dust multiplier okay oh my. so what if you turn that all the way up that could be pretty uh pretty hectic so we'll just leave that on one roughly for now show bodies at actual size obviously we can put that all the way back down but yeah that is a really i really like that that is a really really cool little feature there yeah i would really like to see that in the normal game or like the current game if it was possible that is a really really cool thing okay so there's also simulation options collision accuracy mode okay so what does accuracy mode do okay so use rk4 math to calculate the effect of gravity over time is much slower to calculate but more accurate okay so this basically makes everything simulate more accurately and then obviously the normal mode is less accurate um sort of stuff and then obviously collision mode combine or bounce okay so as we can see, the game gets really laggy when you try and use realistic stuff. So we're just going to stay on the normal, just so we can actually run the game. So, right, enough of the actual settings plate. Let's actually look at the planets. So we're obviously, we already saw Mercury. So Mercury does look very, very sort of pixely. It doesn't even look like a full sphere shape, which is pretty weird. So there's Mercury. Um, so now moving on, Venus. So over here, look at Venus. Look at, look at how its clouds look. Honestly, I, I think Venus looks better here. Than it does in the present game in the current game i really really like the clouds here because also the current game venus does look quite green and i wouldn't say it's the most realistic sort of looking venus interpretation but i think the venus in this game i've got to say i really i rate it i think it looks really really cool and i think it looks a lot better than the uh current version of venus I have to say um personally from my opinion so yeah, guys, let us know what you think down below on the uh, vi on all the visuals of all the planets in this game as well, because I think that's quite a cool, um, yeah, I think that's quite a cool sort of uh, look to Venus um, in this version of the game. So there there's a nice look at Venus. Is there any way you can take its atmosphere off? Because obviously there's very limited options with customization, so physical appearance. Oh, wow. Oh, 
pretty cool. Okay, so I don't know. Can you guys see that? It's opened up a separate window. Let's see. Can you can you guys? I'm not sure if you guys can actually see that. Um, but yeah, there's, it's got me a color wheel up. So I don't know if you guys can see that. But okay, so what does that do? Oh, <laughs> wowee. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, so they did have atmosphere customization, or I'll say cloud atmosphere customization back in this game as well. Texture. Oh, you can change the v the texture as well. Ooh. Okay, so random. So what does that do? Okay. I've got, oh. Oh, so you can check. You can have random textures. Oh, that's wow. I gotta say, another another feature. It could be quite cool in the the current universe sandbox is a random texture button that generates like a random appearance or random look or just so you can change the textures in a like a legit manner instead of having to like make it a gas giant because in like in the in the current version of the game you have to make objects like gas giants and they turn them back to rocky planets like change the texture and stuff um and the visual appearance of like a random rocky planet but in this game you can just do it by that and also you could type in a texture so if you have a look in the uh game files oh Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just popped it into a... Uh... So I'm just looking in the files. So it's opened up a window and it's showing me different textures. So that's that's quite cool, actually. But let's go back to full screen mode. It popped me out. Okay, there we go. So is that back on full screen? Okay. So yeah, I opened up a folder with the textures in it. So that's pretty cool. So if you press this button, yeah, it opens the folder up. Okay, I like it. So I'll see color... Uh, we can just pull it back to a more basic colour. But yeah, cool. that's cool. I like that. So we've obviously completely ruined Venus though. So yeah, we'll leave that be uh, for now. But okay, that's cool. So you can change textures uh, just on the dot like that. Okay, so obviously the texture for this one is Earth.bds there. Okay, so how does Earth look in this version of the game? So okay, let's just slow down time. Two minutes. Okay, so here's Earth all the way back from uh, Universe Sandbox Legacy. So yeah, I gotta say, yeah, it does look pretty good. So... Uh, how are we doing here? Let's uh, turn up the speed. The oceans do look blue. I really like the way the clouds look as well. And yeah, I've got to say, it's nice that we now have access to clouds like this in the uh, current version of Universe Sandbox. Um, also, obviously, they added the cloud customization in like the recent updates. So, yeah, it's cool to see that we can now sort of make Earth look more cloudy like this version of Earth. But I've got to say, yeah, Earth looks pretty cool. So, there's Earth. Okay, next up, we've got Mars. Is there a way to do chart mode? I think that would be quite good. Can we, is there a chart? Oh, there is a chart mode. Okay. Right, uh, diameter. We always do diameter. Oh, you have diameter as well. Okay, so this version of the game as well, diameter. It's not radius, it's diameter. Hey, so if you didn't know, diameter is basically from one side to the other. Radius is only from one side to the center. So radius So radius times two is what the diameter is. Okay, so here we are. So Mar look at Mars. Oh, Mars does look very sort of orange. It looks a lot different to the way it does in the game currently. Uh, where's, where's Earth gone, is it? I don't know, where, where, where does, where's Earth? I don't know where that's gone yet. Yeah, oh, this game is quite sensitive with the mouse. Okay, I think Earth is kind of merged inside Venus. What if I delete Venus, for instance? Okay, I don't know where Earth's gone, but yeah, we already saw Earth anyway, so that's fine. So here's Mars. So as we can see, it does look very, very orange compared to the Mars we have in the current game. Okay, so next up we've got Jupiter. Yeah, the planets are combined. Let's just go to a... Can we go to a fresh simulation? I think it's probably better if we do that. So new simulation. Whoa, uh... Create empty simulation. Okay. Right, so add planets. So we can have a look at the interface as well. Oh my god, right. Uh, Mars, so Jupiter. So here's a good look at Jupiter in the uh, present version here. So Jupiter in its old form. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so got to say it does look a lot more detailed than the Jupiter we have in the game at the moment. But yeah, we've been talking about that for quite a while really in uh, my videos. I've always said about the Jupiter in Universe Sandbox 2 or, un or current Universe Sandbox now. I've always said it, yeah, it, it could definitely do with a detail overhaul. But yeah, as we can see, if the Jupiter in the current game looks something like this, I think that'd be a really good improvement. But obviously, that's up to opinion, and that's just my personal opinion, guys. So if you agree differently, let us know what you think down below um, in the comments there. But let's, uh, can we, how, how do we play? There we go, play. Ah, there you go, so there's a nice look. So where, where's the old red spot? That's what I want to see. So one hour. Red spot, where are we? Slow down. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's just uh, slow it down. There we go. And I've got to say, the interface is really, really weird adapting to from playing Universe Sandbox for like five years, playing the original game. Because I've barely ever played this. I've only like gone in it briefly just to make sure it all runs and stuff. But I've never actually gone and played it in depth like we're doing here. So, pretty cool stuff. Okay, so where's, where's the red spot? I want to see how the red spot sort of uh, 
looks here. Okay, there it is. Yeah. I think that's a really good looking Jupiter um, for this version of the game. And also, all the way back in 2008, I think the Jupiter's got really high detail for the time as well. And i got to say, I think the Jupiter here looks better than the Jupiter we have in the game at the moment. I like the detail. It's got way more cloud detail, way more like, sort of colour blending on it. And yeah, i got to say, it looks really cool. So there's Jupiter. So what we'll do is we'll delete that. Uh, now we're going to add Saturn in. Okay, so how does Saturn look? Let's have a look. So, Saturn. Play, uh, play. So again, Saturn, quite similar feedback to Jupiter. I'll give it. It just has more colour blend into it, more bands in there. But obviously, this game, I don't think it runs on the same stuff like the current game does. So the way the bands work, and I think this is just a texture rather than having all bands combined together. So maybe it isn't possible to make them look like this, like in the, in the current game without adding like a crazy amount of bands. But yeah, I've got to say, if it is possible, it would be cool to see Jupiter and Saturn get an overhaul in the way they look. Because in the in the current game, they do look quite basic. Compared to, obviously, their realistic and counterparts, and obviously their counterparts in this game as well. I've got to say, Jupiter and Saturn, they do look a lot more detailed um, here as well. So, yeah, there's Saturn, a the nice look to it. Whoa! Okay, so if you zoom in with your mouse, it kind of makes you go on the surface. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, there's a close look at Saturn. I'm kind of locked onto it now. See, we're on surface view. Let's exit that. Okay, oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, there is Saturn. So, a nice look of it there. Has like some, uh, it almost looks like it has some impart marks or sort of holes on it there, like cloud holes. So, okay, there's Saturn. Okay, so what have we got next? So next up is Uranus. How does Uranus look? This has always been quite a uh, one that's discussed a lot in the uh, present current game. Is Uranus? Uranus's texture always had quite a weird look to it in Universe Sandbox 2. But looking at the original game, completely spot on, I'd say. It's got its really pale sort of colour, which is what it um, in theory should have. Because obviously in Universe Sandbox 2, for the longest time, Uranus was way, way, way too blue and vibrant blue. But here in this game, we can see Uranus has got its proper pale sort of very very bland sort of appearance and yeah that's in theory how it um should be so yeah uranus definitely gets a big thumbs up from me um in this version of the game i like it i think it looks really really good and yeah you can see there's little uh details in it like it in theory should be not much uh, going on at uranus a very very sort of inactive um ice giant so they're looking cool i quite like how you right click it and it has all of the information there that's quite a cool little nifty little feature there so i quite like that okay so there's uranus delete rings I don't even know there was rings around it. Can we? Can you add rings? Turn it into dust. What does that do? Let's let's try that. Oh, oh okay. So it literally just pops it. Ah, cool. Okay, so that, that's um, all that's left of here in us. So, right, Neptune. How does good old Neptune look? So let's just place it over here. Get away from all those particles. So, good old Neptune. How do you look in this version of the game? And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, is there a dark spot? Okay, I see one of the scooter sort of uh, scooter spots down there. Is the dark spot on Neptune? Come on, uh, turn the sound up. And that was one thing I would love. Oh, there's yeah, well, there's one of the scooters, the smaller dark spot. So you can see the uh, smaller dark spot there. There's also some scooters. If you don't know what they are, just look them up. But okay, oh, it does. Oh yeah, Neptune has the dark spot in this. Oh, see, it's not the most detailed looking dark spot, but it has the dark spot. Okay, developers, dark spot. Come on. Add the dark spot to the current game. It'd be so cool. If there's just a way to toggle it on or off. That would be really, really cool to see. And I'm sure a lot of people would like to see that as well. But yeah, that is, that's cool. Dark spot on Neptune. Would love to see that in the uh, current game. But obviously it may not be possible. I'm not sure. I don't obviously, I don't know how the code works. But obviously if, if, it's, a, if it's possible to get the red spot on Jupiter, fingers crossed it's possible to do it with Neptune and have Neptune with its own sort of spot texture you could add on. I mean, that could be... That could be quite cool. And yeah, it's also got some other, like, uh, some of the smaller dark spots and scooter storms on it as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, really, really, uh, yeah, Neptune gets a good thumbs up from me as well. It's not too vibrant in colour. I think it's a quite a good uh, representation of Neptune as well. And it does remind me of the Space Engine one quite a lot as well. So I like it. Really, really cool. So yeah, Neptune, definitely a thumbs up. So the Ice Giants, they're all the Gas Giants, actually, they get a thumbs up from me. The Rocky Planets, obviously, the, the I'd say the ones in the current game are way better than the ones in this game. But yeah, I think the Gas Giants from the original game win me over, I have to say. I really, really like the way they look. And I think I think they have more detail and more colour blending um, on them as well. But obviously, I think that's just the way... I think these are like actual textures rather than having individual bands like they have in the current game, if I understand it correctly. So I think that's just how, how the design works. And maybe these... Yeah, I think these are just sort of textures rather than individual bands that you add on um so that's my guess but obviously i'm not the programmer hopefully the developers um would say something about that i'm not sure um if they're if they're watching this that'd be cool but um yeah let me know developers if you're watching i mean yeah i'd be interested uh, to know if um 
these are like textures or they're like done by bands like they are in the uh, game currently. But yeah, I'm guessing these are textures. But I think either way, a dark spot, that would be amazing to see in the current game if possible. That would be uh, that'd definitely be some feedback um, I'd like to see. But um, yeah, there we are. So yeah, Gas Giants overall from the visuals of the planets. Gas Giants for me, I think are better looking than the ones in the current game. But Rocky Planets, the current game blows them out of the water. I think the only thing that looks cooler about the Rocky Planets is Venus's clouds and atmosphere. I think Venus, I think the interpretation of Venus does look better here than it does in the current game. But obviously the current games, Mercury, Earth and Mars, they are way, way, way cooler and better looking than the ones in this game. So there we are. Okay, so there's um, there's um, all the sort of the planets done. So now let's actually explore some of the other nooks and crannies of this game. So also you can save, we can probably create a system as well. So we've got our local galaxy. So let's see um, what we've got here. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is cool. Well, the galaxies do get weird when you zoom in. I guess that's for lag purposes, though. So, yeah. Okay. So when you zoom out, they actually do look really cool. So you've got the whole local group? Oh, that's so cool. It would be cool to see this simulation added in the current game, not going to lie, but obviously galaxies in the current game, if you place a lot of them, and they do get very, very laggy and slow. But yeah, this is a nice little neat simulation you can do here. I mean, Milky Way, you've got Andromeda over here, and all of the other small... You've got Triangulum as well. Oh, yeah. So you got like... The, yeah, this is pretty much the whole local group. And you've got all of the small dwarf galaxies around, obviously the two big galaxies, and also you've got um, the other one over there as well. Oh, that's awesome. So you got, yeah, Triangulum is obviously the other largish galaxy, but obviously Milky Way and Andromeda are the two top ones here. So you got the dwarf. Oh, that is amazing. So you get all the little dwarf uh, galaxies and stuff as well. I like it. That's a really, really neat little simulation now. I like it. What happens if you speed up time? Do they actually, like, collide us? Can, can we run it? How fast can it actually run? I want to see if they move. Uh, let's lock onto the Milky Way. It'd be cool if you could see the two galaxies merge. I don't know if it does it in this simulation, but... I mean, can we just go to, like, stupid lengths of time here? Do they move at all? If we go to a billion... What if we couldn't go for a hundred million years? Uh, I don't know if we can go much quicker than that. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to like doing that. Uh, ten times. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really want to do that. Um, let's try opening it again, because I think I may have messed it up by putting a really high number in so yeah really really cool simulation of the our local galaxy so times 10 yeah it doesn't seem like times it up doesn't really seem to like it times i don't know so what, what does this button do Gra oh, that's gravity Ooh, that would really um upset things but yeah, it doesn't look like i can actually run the simulation too well by the looks of it i mean yeah, it does get really really laggy here as we can see when i press play so there's no way this is going to run at millions of years. I don't think this is able to move, unfortunately. Um, I wonder if the galaxy collision is in here. Oh, it is. Okay, right. So, so oh, oh, okay. Nice. Okay, so there's a, there's a cool view of it from a distance. Obviously, when you zoom in, they do look really weird. But when you zoom out, they, they look cool. So, speed up time a bit. Actually, now let's just let it run the way it was designed. So, galaxy collision in the original Universe Sandbox Legacy game. Check it out. I've got to say, the galaxies do look pretty neat. I do like the way the galaxies look. So let's uh, see how they merge. Move the camera as well. So Milky Way and Andromeda. Going brawling. You can see the Milky Way is the more yellow coloured one. Okay, so they merge. Stuff gets shot out absolutely everywhere, which may or may not happen. Obviously, we don't know. But obviously, big galaxy collision. I'm sure some stuff could get ejected. But... A lot there's a lot of them here. So okay, so can we can we run any quicker? See how fast we can go. So you can see the two individual black holes, Milky Way and Andromeda. They've collided, they're now sort of working themselves out by the looks of it really. Let's see if they actually return and merge again. Okay, oh. Oh yeah, they are getting closer. Oh, and they've actually they've tossed each other out. Okay. Oh, wow we. Okay, so they've just uh, deflected and magneted off each other. But I think the real life um, sort of analysis is that the both of them would collide together. But yeah, the game has uh, launched them out with here, so that's pretty cool. So Milgrain and Andromeda have created a huge mess. 
I mean, in theory, you could. Well, could you class that as a galaxy? I mean, just looks like one of the uh, elliptical ones now, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. Oh, wow, he has a lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah, guys, there's the galaxy collision sim. Okay, so what we got next? Um, constellations. Okay. Ooh, okay, I like the. Ooh. Okay, so here's the sun. So can we view it from Earth, or... Oh, no, there's no Earth. Okay. Okay, so just zooming out. So the constellations, obviously, we can see the constellations from different stars' points of view as well. So that's really cool. So we've got Alpha Centauri. So how do the constellations look from Alpha Centauri's perspective? So as we can see, the stars change. Because obviously we're in a different location in the galaxy now. So all the constellations do look slightly different. So where, where's one that everyone knows? Uh, Orion. Where's the constellation of Orion? I'm not too knowledgeable on constellations, I have to say. Constellations? Where's Orion? That's one that we all know. Because it's always it's always one you can recognise with the three... There it is. There's Orion there. So you can see the three stars in a row. That's obviously quite recognisable. And obviously it's got some notable names in it like Betelgeuse and Rigel. So how does the Orion constellation look from a different point in the galaxy? So what if we head to a different star? So... Let's say we go to this object here, Atlas. Look how the constellation of Orion, because we're in a different location of space, we can see that Betelgeuse is now in front of all the other stars. So you would never get that constellation from this perspective. So, oh, that's cool, that is. So you can see the constellations all from different points in the Milky Way. So if you go completely behind it, all the constellations wouldn't line up at all. The only way, the constellations will only ever work properly if you're actually in the solar system. If you're any, if you're any other star, all the uh, constellation stars will be in different positions, which is really, really cool. So, obviously, moving back into the central area, the constellations look more familiar. But as you zoom out and go to different stars in different directions, all the constellations won't really match up anymore. That's quite a cool simulation. Do we have that? Con I don't know if we have a simulation like this in the current game, but it's a quite a cool, neat little uh, simulation as well there. I like it. So, you can see Deneb over there in the, uh, the Cygnus constellation there. So, we're looking from Alpha Centauri's perspective, but... Yeah, Deneb, one of the furthest objects out. So if we go all the way to Deneb and look back at the constellations, we can probably see that, yeah, the con none of them look... Yeah, there's no... You, none of them would be even recognisable from this sort of distance, I don't think. There's Antares as well. Over here, one of the other big notable stars. So how, how does this one look? Oh, way more orange. But yeah, again, none of the stars are going to look correct from this perspective in the uh, simulation. So... Yeah, really, really cool simulation there as well, I have to say. I don't know if it's in the current game, because there is a lot of simulations you can access, but I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one like this. I know there's like a local star group, but not one with the constellations, which is quite cool. Yeah, I really like that, okay. All right, so next up, planets and all moons. Let's have a little peek and see how this runs. Okay, whoa. So sun. So it doesn't just have all moons. I think it's got a lot of asteroids in here as well. Wow, we okay. It's also got a space telescope. Huh. What if we put or can we put orbits on? How do we how do we do orbits? Is it setting, isn't it? Uh orbits? Uh da, da, da. where was it? Uh Okay. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh that's bad. Don't run that. Turn that off. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of orbits. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably best we don't use that. <laughs> okay, so as we can see you got Mercury, you got Messenger there as well, so that's a spacecraft. Uh, where, where's Venus? So Venus over here. Uh, Earth, I'm guessing Earth should have a lot of stuff around it. So there's Earth, yeah. Moon, it's obviously got loads of stuff over there. Okay. And obviously lots and lots of stuff in the inner solar system. But also in the asteroid belt, you've got loads of names there. Jupiter's moons, Saturn's moons. Further out, you got Uranus, Neptune, and then obviously you'll be... Uh, Further dwarf or like objects as well. Voyager 1 as well. That's cool. So it actually has a space probe simulation. Pioneer 11. Pioneer 10. Pioneer probes. They're not even in Universe Sandbox 2 or Universe Sandbox. So ca can we see what they look like? Do they have a texture? Can you can you view them? Oh, it just appears as a chunk. Okay, so it's, it's a moon texture actually. But okay, so it's cool. It actually has a representation of uh, the Pioneer probes as well. And yeah, i got to say, if, as for human objects, it would be nice to see a Pioneer probe added to the game as well in the current game. It's a nice little uh, comparison to have more probes in, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. It has all the, all, a lot of objects and space probes as well. Cool. Do like that. That gets a thumbs up from me. Um, what we got next? Explore more simulations. Is that, what does that do? Oh my god. Okay, we're going to be here all day. Oh, wow. 
Pioneer 10, 1973 Pioneer 10 at Jupiter Open Simulation. Pioneer 10, oh, 1973, wow, we. So the, the first visit to the Jupiter sort of area. I think it was anyway. Pioneer 10s fly by Jupiter. So these were like test probes of the voyages, if I remember right. So, oh, yeah, Pioneer, classic. Jupiter's rings look pretty weird in this version, but yeah, okay. So Pioneer 10s fly by. So here we go. So this is the first sort of a. Uh, approach of the Jupiter system. So here we go, the flyby of the big planet by our little uh, cubed friend. There we go. Nice. That's cool. Oh, so let's, let's see what other cool simulations there are. So I think, yeah, we don't need to look at the moon ones. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So what else? Okay, we can look at the collision 1994 Shoemaker. A lovely nine crashing. Let's have a little look. Uh, open simulation. So can we see, where, where is it? Oh, here we go. So obviously we know this quite well, we've seen this in the current version. So let's see how the uh, collisions, because we haven't actually had any collisions yet. We need to see how the collisions look in this game, so let's have a little look. Okay, is it gonna, where, where are they? Come on. Okay, let's just uh, give it a little more time. Speed it up just a tad bit, come on. A little faster. There you go. Okay, so collisions with Jupiter. There you go, okay. Oh, it's okay. There's a few little collision marks. You can see there's a few uh, dots there. Okay. But yeah, my guess is the collision graphics are going to be nowhere near as good as the present day game. Because obviously, better technology down the road obviously means you can simulate better stuff. But yeah, so enough of us looking at the simulations. I mean, we can do that in another episode if you guys want to see another episode. Just check out this game individually. But today, we're focusing on obviously the history of the game. Just how the game runs and just visuals and things like that. But if we want to go further in depth, we can always return to this game another time so create new simulation i think we'll finish off with collisions today because i think we've pretty much explored i mean we've explored a lot of this here and i don't want to make the video too long for part one of this series but okay so next up yeah let's have a collision so we'll go uh, a good old earth versus venus so earth um where, where are we so what is what do these do um normal tool okay so it's at all so let's put venus there I don't want it in orbit mode. Is there a way to like turn off orbit mode? Launch. I guess we can just launch it. Then that works. So Venus into Earth. There you go. Okay. Uh, pause. 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 Hoo -hoo. Okay. We need to slow down time. So turn that off. Okay. Venus versus Earth. We're going to do it in slow motion. Original game. Let's see what the original game's got in store for us. So slow down time. Play. Whoa. Okay. So that went way quicker than I thought it would. Venus just got gobbled up. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. So two minutes oh well that's um that's going pretty quick yeah i want to really slow this down yeah come on if i just go to one second like real time one second one second uh like that okay one second okay so we can see there is a collision mark there oh okay so where do we want let's try that again slow because i know like when you speed it up it can sometimes make the simulation weird so try that again so nice and slow this time Venus Earth is Earth. So how does this look? Oh, okay. So they just pop together. So maybe there isn't proper like collision physics in this. So we can see it has made a collision. Though. So what if we just speed up time now? So does that like cr cr increase the temperature or anything or no? Okay. So it looks like collisions are very, very fairly basic. So they merge together. Nice and simple. There isn't any fancy sort of collision impacts and stuff. So I think that's what the second game was also very good for was it's a massive sort of uh, upgrade on collision physics and things like that. So I guess we can try Mars. I'm guessing we're going to see the same sort of stuff. Yep. Um, we can also throw uh, we'll throw Neptune into it. Why not? So Neptune, obviously, that's going to gobble up Earth. Just Oh, my God, it's just gone. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So we can see, yeah, collisions aren't obviously very, very detailed and developed compared to what we have in the current game. So obviously, collisions are way, way, way better um, in the current game. But let's... Um open existing... Yeah, create new simulations. It's, weird. it's so weird having the menu on the right-hand side. That's really throwing me off. And it also has achievements. What does that do? Does that open anything? No, it hasn't. Maybe it's open something in my computer. I'm not sure. But okay, so it has an achievement mode, and they're on Steam. Those achievements. So you can save. So what if I actually try? I think the thing what we'll finish off here is making a quick little simulation. So what can we do here? So stars. Oh my god, the stars! Oh my god, they look so basic. Wow. Outer Baron. Why not? Uh, I'll place you roughly there. Okay, so design this system. So what we got? So these are moons. 
asteroids, objects, objects. What you got? Okay, so what's that? Bowling ball, tea oh, so the teapot, the dice, monolith. Monolith, ring, ring. What does ring do? So you've got rings, so you can have the rings of all the planets. Oh, it's got Jupiter, it's got Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune rings. Ah. Actually, before we make a simulation, I want to see what the Neptune rings look like. Okay, so that's what Neptune's rings look like in this game. Okay, cool. Interesting stuff. So, okay, right there. Let's actually get to making a system now. So, here we go. Okay. So, stars. Actually, I want to see what this ring is as well. What exactly is this? It's pretty self explanatory It literally is just a ring. Huh. Okay. Right, so, uh, stars. So, who are we going with? Um, where's, where's that about? I'm going to use that one. Uh, Canis Majoris. Oh, Canis Majoris obviously was the largest star um, when this game was made as well in the early 2000s. Or late, I should say, late 2000s. Uh, Pollux, well, where was... Uh... Oh, there we go. I want to use this object here. Okay, there it goes. Right, cool. Right, so making a system around this. So, there isn't any random rocky planets or anything like that. I like the galaxies as well. It's a cool list of stuff. So, stars, planets... These random... Okay, so no, these are just... Uh... So is there any way to get random planets at all? I think the only way to do it is be putting that Venus in like we did earlier and then changing the texture on it. So let's just try doing a simulation with our own planets. So uh, I want Orbit. Is that going to work? Let's just place our solar system planets around here. So Neptune. I'll place them in just different areas. So let's place Mars close, Venus further. I want to see how the simulation runs roughly and how if temperatures and stuff work. So, and actually what we'll do as well is we'll put that cool little feature on of making them bigger. I really like that. It's such a cool little feature. I really like that. That is the number one thing I want to see added to the current game is that. It's really cool. I really, really like it. Okay, so play. I want to see, like, if stuff gets upset by Aldebaran's temperature. Does it increase the temperature of Mars, for instance? Does it do anything? Planet temperature. I oh, say so it does. Yeah, average temperature 800. So does it change anything visually? So, so we'll let the simulation run for a while. Let's. Uh, I want to see if it does like visual changes to the planets at all. Does it like evaporate the water on Earth, for instance? Let's have a little look. No. So what? what so, so what's Earth? So Earth is currently. Can I, Earth. Open up Earth. Two hundred and eighty-two degrees. The yeah, water should have disappeared by now. Properties. So there's no composition as well. Notice there's no composition stuff. Whoa, that star looks glitchy. Oh wow. Uh, Roosh limit. Hill sphere. So I'm not going to touch any of that stuff. Tint. So you have appearance tint. Tint on tint supply texture. Okay, so there's tints and color. That's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, it looks like temperature wise, you can't, yeah, you can't even have visual changes with temperature. So we can see this is very, very primitive compared to what we have in the current game. So you can see straight away there's not much you can do in terms of customization either. I mean, you can't even spawn in random planets. The only way to get like random planets is to customise the normal planets in the game. So you can see it is very, very primitive to what we have currently. So that's just, this is like part one of the evolution of Universe Sandbox, really. Because remember, we're doing the history of the games here. So we're seeing how the game started out. And we're eventually going to go all the way to the present day where we can see how much more customization there is in the present day game. So I think that is really, really cool. But yeah, there we are, guys. I think that does it for checking out the original universe sandbox game so obviously if you would like me to return here in, an, in another video obviously it wouldn't be part of the history of universe sandbox series but just the video in general just exploring and checking things out seeing how stuff works and let me know down below if you would like to see that but with all that said and done guys i really hope you've enjoyed part one of the history of universe sandbox and just exploring the game but yeah stay tuned for next video where we'll be returning to the normal universe sandbox we play in and yeah one of the, the oldest update we can access and we're just going to do a quick video through probably we we'll probably won't be able to focus just on one version we'll probably hop through a few different versions so this will probably be maybe a three or four part series hopefully so yeah stay tuned for that hello everyone and welcome back to another universe sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of the evolution and history of universe sandbox so if you've not checked out the first part which released um earlier this week make sure to definitely go ahead and check that video out first before watching this one as in that episode we go all the way into the original game and just see how different things were all the way back in the year 2008 so 
Moving on from that video now, we are now in the Universe Sandbox 2, the oldest version that I can access, which is Alpha 11.3. So we actually did a video on this recently, but today we're going to be having a quick hop through Alpha 11, probably all the way up to Alpha 14 or 15. And we're just going to see how things have changed and evolved over time. But before we get into Alpha 11, I'm just going to go over a bit of history of Universe Sandbox 2 now. So looking at the, um, I've been on the um, history of the Universe Sandbox notes and all of their old archives and looking all the way back to roughly January 2010 that's when Universe Sandbox 2 was roughly announced and then I believe the game the, the game we know this released roughly around 2015 on Steam but I believe it was available obviously to purchase from the website directly but obviously it was added to Steam um, a little later so we're roughly sitting in the year 2014 when this version of the game is released so this is alpha 11.3 here i can't actually find the developer notes for alpha 11 but i can for alpha 12 and i know alpha 12 was roughly november or like late late 2014 basically was alpha 12 so alpha 11 must have released sometime um, around then so i've got the notes up and yeah i'm in november 2014 and yeah this is when alpha 12 was released in november 3rd so we know that alpha 11 is definitely before november the 3rd um 2014 so yeah we're roughly at the end of the year 2014 now so we've taken a bit of a jump from last episode to today's video but unfortunately i can't access the really really old versions of universe sandbox 2 unfortunately so this is the furthest back we can go but straight away comparing this to the original game we can see it looks a lot different. The background, there is no Milky Way background currently. We can see the interface completely new and fresh. If we just have a look at all the objects, so still um, completely unknown to what we have um, today. If we just look at the planets, we can go to chart mode. So let's just uh, line warp up in radius. Uh, so where are we? Okay. So let's just see what all the objects look like. And I believe does the sun have any sound effect? No, it doesn't seem to have a sound effect. Um, this time like it did in the original game, which is really cool But one thing we did notice in the previous video when we checked out this version was the sunspots Now they aren't in the game like in the current version of the game and that, there's something I'd like to see return I have to say I think that's just a nice little little feature just to have that there I mean if we click play does it um, no, I can't even use the play button actually um, Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, no, it's just hidden in the sunlight. Okay, so if I click play uh, let's just zoom out a little further. I can't actually see it so play I know we're going a little too fast for it, but yeah, the sunspots, they all obviously go around with the star, but it's cool. I, I definitely would like to see sunspots um, added back into the game, because obviously they're not really in the game at the moment. You can't really see them, so just looking at the planets, you can see they roughly all look the same, or I say the same. You can see they actually do look a little different to their present day forms. I've got to say, I quite like the way Neptune looks um, in this version. Uranus as well. I think the version in the current game or current version is a lot better than what it looks like here. I think the version here looks way, way, way too blue. And it almost looks like a Neptune copy, which is pretty crazy. Obviously, onto the uh, inner planets, we can see Earth up and Venus. Obviously, it's, you can look through its atmosphere. Mars. Mars looks fairly similar to the way it does today, just with more reddish atmosphere. We can see the old texture of Mercury as well, the more brownish shade. And then onto the dwarf planets, we can just see Eris, Pluto there. And all the dwarf planets are all just basically white objects they don't really have any sort of unique um textures or anything so you can see they're just kind of all like placeholder textures i guess so we'll see all the main planets are all fine but um yeah the uh dwarf planets are um, slightly different so you can see evolution obviously from the previous game neptune no longer has the dark spot which is a shame i have to say i really would like to see the dark spot make an appearance in universe or in the current version of universe sandbox i think that'd be really really cool but yeah we can see obviously massive massive text changes compared to the original game because remember this game is built on an entirely different engine, I believe, to the original Universe Sandbox, so it's a whole lot different. Completely built um, differently from scratch, um, which is pretty cool. But if we um, just go back out of chart, how do we stand it? Okay, there we go, so we click this button. Okay, so that takes us back to the normal mode, but if we uh, just look in the uh, Add button, for instance, there's a whole lot more stuff you can do um, compared to the original uh, original game. So let's see, can you make like random, oh, so you can have random, so you can now have random planets, because in the original game, these weren't available so if we just look at rat let's actually have a look at some random planets um for example so um orbit please okay so we're going to put them just roughly in the orbit of earth we'll put some closer to the sun as well but i just want to have a rough indicator of what the random planets look like back in this version of the game so okay let's just uh, let, it, let things run for a bit so i'm just going to go to earth i'm going to attempt to colonize one of these so uh, let's also open up the interface of each planet so if we have a look here the atmospheres do look a little weird in this version don't know i have to say but okay so here we are so this is all you can do there isn't really any customization you can do you literally can only change atmosphere you can't change the visuals um, or anything like that but one thing we are going to do is uh 
hydrogen silicate water. This well contains a lot of water, so we are going to lower that down. And let's also slow down time. How do I do that? Okay, so you press this button here, so that slows things down. So I do want to lower the water amounts so we can get a bit of surface on this planet. So, okay, let's just uh, spam click a bit. Just let the uh, surface appear. Okay, so we've got a bit of surface there. So we can see it's roughly a white surface. What I'm going to try and do is change it to a gas giant and see if I can reset the surface texture, try and make it look any different. No, it doesn't even look like you can do it in this version of the game. Okay, good to know, because in newer versions, it would normally change the texture. But we'll see, that hasn't... That doesn't do that yet in this version. Okay, interesting. So, we'll see if we add the water back, you can't really, in the terms of customization, also, you can't do much at all. Um, it looks like I may have uh, ruined it a bit, turned it into a gas object. So, if I uh, speed up time, we need it to obviously melt. Okay, there we go. So, it's melted. And also, we just need to. Um... Okay, so we just need to get the water in the correct sort of amount, really. So, let's just get a bit of land, a bit of ocean. So, just clicking a bit carefully, let it speed up a bit. Where, where's our water? Okay, so there we go. So, you can see there's definitely water on the surface there. It's obviously frozen water. Temperature wise, what are we sitting at? Minus 70. So, if I put it to zero degrees, let's see what it does. Okay, so it still gets too cold, but you can see the clouds obviously appear. So, we need to change the atmosphere. So, where are we? Atmosphere, atmosphere. Okay, temperature. So, if I just give it um, surface pressure of 1 atm, just like Earth. So, hopefully, that will give it what it needs to warm up a bit. Um, so let's just put it to zero. Now it's still getting a bit cold. Okay, so let's just increase our ATM a bit more. Okay, so that puts it into the positive temperatures. So we should start to see this ocean turn more blue. And it looks like it is already, which is cool. So there you go. And that's pretty much it in terms of customization. Like you couldn't do anything else other than this back in Alpha 11. I mean, that was it. You, cu you couldn't change the atmosphere colors or see in game. I don't know if you could mod the files at this point. I'm assuming you could. But in the, we're talking about the bog standard game, no file editing here. This is basically all you could do in terms of customization as far as I know. There isn't any color options. You can't change the color of this land, the land yet. You can't change the color of the atmosphere, the oceans, any of that. You can't do any of that yet. You can obviously turn atmosphere on and off, which is nice. You've still got the old display modes, which have been in the game for quite a while. So those are still all there. Hide rotation. That's an interesting button. Huh. That could be quite cool to have... Um, in the current game, I have to say. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so what else have we got? So orbs, also you've got all the orbital settings. Obviously all the normal radius um, settings there. You've got position lock. That's in the game still. The temperature's looking good. But yeah, I like it. Okay, cool. So there's a rough indicator of um, a, a colonized world. Then we already saw what a frozen world looks like. So what about a planet that's quite hot? So let's see. So we've got one with a red atmosphere here. A red random spawn. So I want to I want to get a planet with like a crazy greenhouse effect. So I want to have something that's just like stupidly stupidly hot. So um, let's do this. So ATM. Let's go up to Venus levels, but closer to the sun here. So let's go to 90. So that will obviously really increase it. But look at the lava and the, obviously the high temperature worlds. They look a lot different to the way they do um, in the game currently, and are completely different to the way they did in the original game as well. So we can see um, yeah a lot of evolution going on here. So. Yeah, it does look, uh, does look pretty cool. See, so that's roughly what a hot object looks like um, in the game. But one more thing I'd like to also highlight. We did it in the video when we checked out this version of the game as well. If I go to, uh, where was it, Earth. And then one, one thing which I think is a really, really cool feature. And I would love to see this um, in, like, the current game. So let's just slow things down a bit. Okay, so here's Earth. Um, just a little more. Okay, and then one thing that you could do back in this version is if you increase the mass and just went, uh, we'll, we'll just buff it up straight to, a, I don't know, a Jupiter. Okay, so 10 Jupiters, okay, that's fine. But if you just increased it further from Jupiters, you would start to get this really cool effect like this, where you can see it's still got the surface below, but it's starting to get the gas giant clouds. And I've got to say, that would be... I would love to see this added back into the game, because currently you can't do this in the current version of the game. But this is such a cool little neat feature with the transformation of a rocky to a gas giant. I think it's such a cool um, little effect. And also, as you uh, increase the mass, it gets more and more and more red as um, maybe the process of fusion may start up. And obviously, if you keep increasing the gas giant, it becomes almost like a brown dwarf-like object at this point, which is really, really cool. I'd love to see this with being able to transform rocky planets into gas giants, like a transition between the rocky appearance and then the gas appearance. I think that's really, really cool. And obviously, if you continue to increase it, it would eventually go even more red and eventually pop into a star. I'd love to see that in the current game. I think that is really, really cool. Um, and obviously, I'm um, looking at the stars. Are there any sunspots on this one? Doesn't look like there is, but yeah, there you go. Oh, no, there is one. Okay, there you go. W would be cool to see the sunspots back as well, but there's just a rough sort of view 
of um, Alpha 11.3. And one thing we'll do as well, we will look at a collision. So let's go to a new simulation and also just look at the um, interface itself. So there's a, obviously create, so obviously a few more, completely way more options than there was before. And looking at the settings menu as well, a lot more settings than there was in the original um, the original game, obviously. So there's just a rough um, indicator. It's obviously got graphics now, which is cool. We're on high. But yeah, it's still not as much as we know uh, and love today. But yeah, still uh, not a nice sort of indicator. So the glows button as well, I remember that. So does that? That doesn't seem to actually really do anything here. Okay, so we've got particles, render mode, um, all of that stuff. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll leave that be. So we'll go into a new simulation here. Let's just have a look at collisions. Because we saw in the last game, the collisions were quite sort of bland, really. They just got combined together. There wasn't really much particles. But Universe Sandbox 2 has always been one for having its particle effects. So let's just have a roughly Earth versus Mars. Um, I just want to put no motion, please. Um, let's just slow down time as well. Place Mars there. Good old Mars versus Earth. Okay, so let's see how these guys collide in Universe Sandbox 2 now compared to the original game. So here we are. So we're going in here. And we can see straight away, look at the particle effects. I mean, look at, compared to the original game, look how much of a step forward this is compared to the original game. The original game... You practically had made a little collision mark, but you didn't have any of the particles or anything. I mean, look at the detail here compared to what you had in the original game. I mean, that is such a huge improvement, and it's, it's just crazy. It is so cool how um, much this game has evolved. But yeah, there you go. So there's a rough collision sort of uh, how collisions looked in the original game. You can see the, the lavery surface looks very, very weird to what we know today. But yeah, there you are. So obviously, poor old Earth has been absolutely uh, beaten up here. So there it is. It looks like its surface texture just changed as well. And yeah, that's all it's left of it now. So I mean, look at the state of that. Craters and everything. So, okay, there we are. It's also got some uh, remaining fragments orbiting dangerously close. But I think what we'll do as well, we'll have a, we'll throw a gas giant in there for a collision as well. So we'll use good old Neptune here. I'm going to place it there. So that will slowly uh, drag the Earth towards it. And let's see a, a, a gas giant sort of collision in this as well. So here we are. Craters do look pretty cool, but yeah, there you are. So let's uh, see Earth versus Neptune now. So you can see straight away the gas giant collisions. It makes different particles. And there you go. Looking really cool. Oh, the gas giant has like a glowing effect on it as well. But yeah, there you are. So let's um, speed up time a little more. Just let that all uh, end off. Uh, look back onto Neptune. You also see there's collision marks on Neptune now as well. But yeah, there you are. So that is um, a brief sort of overview of um, how the game has changed from um, the original game all the way up to Universe Sandbox 2 Alpha 11.3. But with all that said and done, now we're going to take a jump. Hopefully we can make a jump to Alpha 12. So see you guys on the other side. Okay, everyone. So welcome to Alpha 12.5 here. And as we can see straight away, compared to the version we we're just in Alpha 11, we can already see some changes um, have happened here. So just looking at the notes here, we can see they're talking. They're actually talking about Alpha 13 at this point. So this is December 25th, 2014. That's where we are now. So yeah, we're still in Alpha 12, but yeah, they're just talking about Alpha 13 um, hasn't actually released yet. So Alpha 12. Let's have a look around. So here we can see the Milky Way background has now been implemented into the game. So the first sort of iteration of it right here, looking at the sun as well. The sunspots are still here as well. So we can see they were in Alpha 12. And But the main thing in this update, I have the up, I can now actually read the update notes of this. So there's a brand new look to the create, add and chart panels, which now use thumbnail tiles instead of text lists, which is really cool. And there's also some creation tools, rogue planet encounters, randomized solar systems, material grids, and this also has reworked collision fragments and supernovas, which are in this version as well. Okay, so there's just a brief overview, but straight away, if we just look at the add button here, check it out. The first iteration of having all the objects kind of listed here. So look at that. How cool is that? So obviously you've got obviously all the bowling balls, but the interface is still on the left hand side of the screen as well. So yeah, pretty good stuff there. We can see obviously Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, all the planets there. So let's just have a brief look of the uh, planets as well. Let's see if any of the textures have changed and stuff. So we've still got the interface, like I said, on the left-hand side of the screen, which is quite unusual um, for what we're used to. So onto the planets themselves, we can see, yet yeah, they still... Um, oh, no, no, there has been some changes. No, if we look here, slow down time, we can see... I think Jupiter and Saturn, I think they look like their present-day forms now. I think they're, they, they pretty much look like the way they do now. But we can also see Neptune and Uranus... They look more like they used to as well. Look, Uranus has had a complete overhaul compared to its previous version in update um, 11. We can see it's way more sort of lighter blue than the deep blue it had before. So we can see changes with Uranus and Neptune. Neptune looks more like it does in the current version of the game as well. But yeah, Uranus has obviously had a change to its older texture here. 
So not obviously the current texture, but yeah, that was a texture we had for a long time. Obviously, onto the inner planets, we can see they look fairly the same. So there they all are there. We can see Pluto and Eris, all the dwarf planets. They still have all that white, bland texture. But yeah, there we are. So uh, let's quickly go out of chart mode now, back to standard mode. Okay, there we are. So let's uh, hop out here. So, okay. So yeah, Alpha 12.5. Right, good. So let's uh, go into a new simulation. You can see that the menu and the interface still looks fairly similar to the way it does before. Obviously, we've got this new sort of um, area here. Oh, got some of my sims here. I'm not going to open those because they will crash the game because they're from newer versions. So that would really mess things up. Uh, let's have a look, at, a look at the Galaxy Collision. Okay, so does it actually run? We can see it's struggling to run. I mean, can it go any faster? No, it doesn't look like it wants to run, really. Okay, so the Galaxy Simulation is so laggy in this version of the game, it doesn't look like it wants to run. But, um, yeah, there we are. So you can see the Galaxies, um, they're looking a lot, a lot different to the way they did in the original game. Comparing that to the original game in the previous video, the Galaxies have had a massive overhaul. And, yeah, they do look completely different now. But let's uh, hop out of that. And let's actually look into the... Uh, go to a new simulation here. And we're going to do the same collision we did before with Earth and Mars. We're going to see how things have changed because this update said about it was um changing the way collisions were so had new particle effects and things so we're going to place mars here and do yeah the same collision we did before and then we'll throw neptune in afterwards as well we'll use these as our free sort of dummy planets so here we go earth versus mars in the next update on from 11 so here we are okay so let's see what we got oh oh what the heck is that what happened there Okay, so we can see Alpha 12 may be a bit bucky. Oh, no, so the Earth is still there. It's just gone invisible. How bizarre is that? Let's try that again. To Earth versus Mars. There you go. Okay, let's try that again. So let's see if that was just a one-time thing or if it is a genuine bug in this version of the game. So let's have a look. No, it looks like the whenever the Earth... Yeah, so the Earth is still there. It's just invisible. So it did destroy the Mars, but we can see it didn't create any collision effects, and Earth has just gone invisible now. So let's try a new simulation again. Let's try Earth versus Neptune this time. So spawn the Earth here. And fun fact as well, if you look at the Earth carefully, not all of its oceans are filled in. You can see some of the areas, the water level's lower there, so that's pretty weird. Um, let's spawn Neptune in again. Let's uh, watch this. No? Okay, so collisions in update 12 seem to be completely broken which is um, quite crazy, so we can't actually um, get to show off those collision physics, unfortunately. Just looking at the interfaces as well, we'll just go to a new simulation again. And we will... Um, actually, one thing I want to try as well, I'm going to run the performance test. I want to see if that simulation has changed at all, or is a different version here. So let's just have a little brief look of what we get in here. So let's see how this runs. Okay, so this is... You see this in the... Re well, this model. I'm not sure... The camera's moving a lot different to the way it does in the current run te or the test you get in the current game but you can see um yeah the textures and stuff the graphics it, it, this version is definitely more laggy than um versions we know from the future so pretty uh, pretty crazy stuff there we can see the galaxy collision is a really really slow simulation here and you can see it's very very choppy as well that's not the recording lag and the game generally is being really really laggy here which is um pretty hectic stuff okay so here we are okay so collisions with the moon so do the collisions actually work Okay, so they do work. Okay, so here's a bit of a taste of what the collisions look like since we couldn't get it to work. So, okay, there you are. So you can see, yeah, the collisions, they do make, um, yeah, they look they look pretty cool. So there you are. And obviously comparing it to the previous version of the game, there's not as many particles, but obviously they are smaller objects here. So that's to be expected. Okay, so what we got next? Okay, there you go. Right, so that's the end of that. But one, yeah, one last thing I want to check out is just the uh, interfaces here. So let's just see if there's any other options you can do. So you can, or climate. Okay, so this option wasn't here before. So that's obviously changed, or given the atmosphere and all that, its own menu now compared to what it was before. So there you are. And also climate mode. This wasn't in the previous version of the game either um, on Earth. So if you obviously turn that on and off, I'm sure some people will remember this feature. That would just enable the snow and stuff on the Earth. So you had that there. Materials. You had organics, water, iron, silicate, and hydrogen. But if you uh, if you look closely in Alpha 11, like we just saw, carbon dioxide has been removed. In the previous version in Alpha 11, which we just showed, there was the six elements, but now there's only five. So you got organics, iron, water, silicate, hydrogen. But carbon dioxide has disappeared. So we can see that carbon dioxide has been out of the game for a long time. So. Yeah, there you go. So there's a good old organics, obviously water, hydrogen in there as well. But yeah, no more carbon dioxide. That is now being removed from the game. 
And I've got to say, I would like to see it return. And maybe organics, because organics aren't in the game currently. But it would be nice to see those elements return and give us a few more elements to uh, play around with. But yeah, there you are. So there's a brief view of Update 12. Obviously, I've not shown everything. But we're going over sort of the key features of the game. So that is Alpha 12. So now we're going to make the jump to Alpha 13. Okay, everyone. So welcome to Update Alpha 13 now. And I've just got the notes up here. So we're now in the year 2015. This is this was posted in February the 6th of yeah, um, February 2015 here. And yeah, this is Alpha 13, the biggest update yet. So it says overhaul collisions, Mars climate, planetary cutways, tidal heating and evolution, working orbital element controls, a better looking UI and much, much more. So it's our biggest update and the update we spent the most time on okay pretty cool so yeah mars now has its own climate mode added to the game which is pretty cool and obviously the uh collisions and stuff here this should be quite interesting so let's have a little look and play around so straight away you can see down here the feature of using the numbers on your keyboard will now launch objects into the simulation so we can see i'm throwing objects as i'm clicking the buttons here wherever i point the mouse which is pretty cool so if i press number eight it fires another sun in so as we can see that's immediately going to cause trouble. So uh, let's see what it does. Oh, you can see it's pulling the other sun as well. It's probably going to create a supernova here. I mean, that's not looking good. And they're just going to go slap bang straight into each other and causing a massive collision. And um, there's a taster of a supernova in the old version of the game as well. So there you are. Looking good. And you can see obviously the Milky Way background is returned um, for this version as well. What does this button do here? Okay, so that you can open and close that, which is quite cool. Okay. Um, add menu, let's see here. Okay, so this is looking briefly the same as what it did before as well. No changes there. But yeah, this update was mainly about the collisions. So we're going to go ahead and have a look into a new simulation again. And we'll also run a performance test as well. So we'll, we'll have a little look here and just see how the game has run. So if we remember the last one, the performance test gave us a score of 32. So let's see what it does this time and see how the game has improved. It's looking less choppy already, actually. We can see it's the same animation as it did before with the camera. So let's just see how this runs compared to the previous ones we can see here. Okay, so this one's a little laggy, but I think that's to be expected because there is a lot of objects in this little simulation here with the Earth and all these moons. So let's just see how that runs. Okay, there you go. Okay, and the next simulation, the Galaxy Collision, is looking way smoother. Look at that. Look how the game has improved just in one update alone, all the way from Alpha 12 to 13. You can see straight away they're running way better there. And here we have the Moon Collisions again, so we can have a brief taster of the collisions in this version of the game. So you can see straight away they're creating more particles than they did before. So let's uh, see how that all goes together. There you are. Okay, all the game's lagging a bit with those collisions there. Okay, so there you go. So you can see, yeah, the collisions are looking smoother. I think than the previous version as well in update 12 so there you are there's a good uh good look of that okay so what have we got next okay so we've got 32 again the exact same score in the next version but i gotta say it definitely looked well uh, it definitely looked way less choppy i could definitely see improvements there but yeah moving on so we're going to look at earth again we're going to do the earth versus mars and see if it works oh earth's a little frozen here that's weird that's right, so earth versus mars okay so slow down time place mars there Okay, let's see how things roll. We want it in still, please. No, we need to delete that one. Still. Let's place Mars there. Close this. Delete that one. Okay, here we go. So Earth versus Mars. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so speed up the time a little bit. We can see the game's a little laggy. But let's uh, let it run. Okay, slow down time a bit. Hopefully, um, hopefully we actually get a collision this time compared to the previous update. So let's uh, see them collide together here. And yes, we can see already... The collision is working. It's creating, I'll see all the normal collision effects. Oh, got some explosions going on as well as Mars gets engulfed by the Earth. I like how the collisions show up on this bit here as well. I think that's really, really cool up here. So you can see it all going down. But yeah, there you are. So there is a Mars versus Earth collision. You can see, comparing it to um, update um, 11 where we started, you can see it's looking, it's looking a lot cooler. But one thing that's quite funny, I think, is that is that snow or is that clouds that you can see on the surface? I'm assuming that's clouds. I think that would be quite funny if it is snow. But yeah, there you are. Okay, so Earth completely boiling hot after that collision. But yeah, there you are. So you can see the collision obviously works this time compared to um, Alpha 12 there. So yeah, there's a good indicator of what Alpha 13 can do. Again, we will take a quick little peek at the uh, material. So you can see organics, iron, water, silicate, hydrogen. Obviously no carbon dioxide still. That's been removed. Uh, customization wise, obviously there's still nothing. Still no terms of customization. There's no color options, nothing. So there you go there. Go back into a new simulation. Actually, no, I want to go back to the solar system. I just want to see 
the solar system itself here. Okay, so I just want to have a quick uh, view of all the planets here. I want to see if there's been any texture changes and stuff like that. So let's have a little lineup of radius mode, please. Okay, there we are. Okay, so onto the planets themselves. And also looking at the sun. Where are the... Okay, so the sunspots are still there. So you can see there's a sunspot there. So sunspots are still in Alpha 13, which is pretty cool. Okay, and also onto the planets themselves. Obviously Jupiter, Saturn looking the same as they do. Neptune and Uranus, yep. Yeah, they all look the same. But Earth and Venus obviously still look a whole lot different to their present day counterparts. All of the inner planets do really. The gas giants have been the same for a long time really, but the inner planets still look different. Obviously the dwarf planets, no random textures for these guys yet. They're all just frozen up still, so pretty interesting stuff there. But yeah, there we go. So there's a brief overview of Alpha 13. So we can see also, I believe this is the first incarnation of City Lights, I want to say. I don't remember seeing City Lights in the previous versions. I may be wrong on that, so correct me in the comments if I am wrong, but I think this may be the first time we see city lights, and you can see straight away, they don't look as detailed as they do um, as we know them today. You can see there's way less lights as well, but yeah, the city lights do not look that detailed. But yeah, city lights have made their first appearance in this version now, so that's uh, pretty cool. But yeah, there we go. So that does it for Alpha 13.1, so we're going to finish up today's video in Alpha 14, guys. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. Okay, everyone, so now welcome to update Alpha 14. Um, we're now in February 28th, 2015, so it's only a few weeks after the previous update, which is uh, pretty interesting as well. So, yeah, we're now in Alpha 14.1, and again, we've got the same sort of uh, greeting as we have for the last few updates. So this update, if I'm just looking at the notes here, so it says lots of bug fixes, a total first pass on total fragmentation, re-enabled exploder tool, better performance for slower machines, etc, etc. And there's also um, the last update was just talking about Alpha 13 here. So this update 14 seems to have just, but it's more of a bug fix update. So we'll just have a little peek and just see how things run here. So we can see again, looking at the sun, have a little peek. So the sun spots, they are still there. There is a sun spot there. So the sun spots do uh, retain their appearance in this update. If we look at Earth as well, I want to have a little peek at the city lights as well. So let's see, yeah, the city lights still look very basic. Okay, cool. Right, and then one thing I want to do again is run performance test. I want to see what sort of performance we get from this version, as this version was supposed to be an overhaul. So let's just see how this version of the run, so we can see the same old performance test that we know for the previous updates. So we're going to see how this all runs and see sort of what score we get. So it's this simulation here, it seems to be the most laggy of them all. So I'd be quite interested to see how uh, this performs. I want to say it's performing better though, so we'll have to see what the result gives us at the end. Okay, next up we've got the galaxy collision again, so we can see that's looking pretty smooth to me, so they're all combining there nicely, okay, it's Milky Way and Andromeda, and then lastly we have the collisions with the moon here, so let's see how this runs, so we can see collisions, let's see if there's any changes, I mean they look fairly similar to the previous update, so let's uh, just see, yeah, I want to say collisions look fairly similar to, to the way they did in the previous update, so yeah, it looks like this update's mainly just a bug fix update. Here, so Alpha 14, so we we'll probably won't spend too much time as we finish up today's video in this version. So let's see what else we've got as well. Okay, so 34, so we can see um, the average score 34 this time. So we can see the previous version gave us 32, so we've had a little increase there, um, which is quite nice. So let's see what else we've got. I mean, I think all the planets, I think they're still going to look all the same here. There we are, but one thing I want to try as well, I want to see if any of the planets, like the dwarf planets. I want to keep an eye on the dwarf planets in their textures. So Pluto, we can still see frozen. Just, yeah, all the dwarf planets still look exactly the same. Interesting stuff there. But yeah, there we are. So let's quickly go into a new simulation again. I will run the same old tests we've been doing. So Earth versus Mars once more. Let's just place uh, that in still here. Place that there. Yep, yeah, that still looks fairly, fairly, and I did run it faster, but that still looks pretty much the same as it did before. Then we'll place a Neptune in here as well. And there's the uh, collision with the gas giant. So the gas giant collision. Ooh. Whoa. Okay, that looks... That's different. The way the gas giant collision heated up there. Okay. So, how, so let's actually run that. How does that cool down then? Let's have a little... Uh... Okay, there you go. Okay, so there's Neptune again. Okay, interesting. So that did increase fairly weird there. So, ooh. Ooh, so this is new. Okay, so what did I press there? I pressed... What did I actually press? High toolbar. I don't even know how I brought that menu up. <laughs> But I just opened a little menu there, so that's quite cool. So we can see... Oh, okay, so you just click on one of the objects and then you can launch anything, I guess? Oh, you can pick custom presets. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. 
So if I press number four, it'll launch a Venus. Ah, nice. So you can kick, click custom, custom presets for which key on the keyboard. So you also get keys one to eight there. That's quite cool, actually. I like that. Cool. Okay, so there we are. So um, gosh, I don't know what that... You can see that little... Uh, spot on it there little shadow I wonder what that's all about but one more thing i want to try as well is um before we finish up today's video i want to see if that simulation or not that simulation i say i want to see if when you add um stuff to the earth more mass i want to see if it can has that cool gas giant phase again so let's finish up with that today so let's, let's slow down things again obviously we're just going to put it straight up to um 10 jupiters and then we'll just increase from there uh 10 yep okay and then just continue to add mass so let's see if we get that cool gas giant. No. Okay, so that cool phase where it becomes into like a gas giant, that's gone. That's been removed. So we can see it was it was removed at some point in between Alpha 11 and Alpha 14. But I've got to say, it's been gone such a long time. But it's such a cool little feature. And I would love to see it return. I have to say, it's such a cool little thing. So there we go. That's all ruined. But obviously, again, if we try it, it just turns it straight into a gas giant with no cool heating effects or anything like that, which is a shame. I have to say, I would really like to see that feature make a return, I have to say. And yeah, guys, let us know what you think down below. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video. And today we're going to be doing part three of the evolution and history of Universe Sandbox. So today we are starting off in Alpha 15 or Update 15. And this is actually the Pluto Encounter update, um, which is really, really cool as well. So Alpha 15 is the biggest update ever for Universe Sandbox 2. Because remember, it's still in the Universe Sandbox 2 years at the moment. So this is the first time. So if you remember last episode, we finished with um, Alpha 14, Update 14. And the interface still wasn't really what we knew it as. But now in Alpha 15, we're starting to see what we know today the first beginnings of what we know today so as we can see this menu is a lot more familiar than it was in the previous video so yeah pretty cool stuff indeed here so as we can see in this update they've updated series and also i think they've added the um pluto texture in here as well which is really really cool because obviously um pluto flyby was in 2015 and yeah as you can see the date here july 9th 2015 is the update we're in currently now so we've taken a bit of a jump from the previous update in a uh, alpha 14 so without further ado let's actually go ahead and explore what the game looks like so here we are so as we can see the milky way background has been uh, added into like the default simulation at the beginning now um or the old texture for it anyway that's the older um or the old version of what the milky way used to look like in the game as well and also if we look at the menu here wow look, look at that there you go so this menu is um added back into the game now remember that button the arrow i've got to say I really want to see this arrow back. It is so much more useful than what the one we have in the game at the moment. But one thing I'm just noting, look how look how responsive the menu is compared to the current game. This is way faster than the uh, current game as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, check that out. That's going really quick. Look how, re look how responsive that all is. I mean, that is lightning fast speeds there. Really, really cool stuff indeed. But yeah, i got to say, this arrow, I would love to see the arrow make a return um, in the current game. Because the arrow is so much more useful than dragging it up and down, I have to say. Okay, so there we are. And also one thing I want to point out as well is the um, music in the game has been added. In the previous version or in the previous videos, I had to actually add music in in my edit. But this version of the game has music with it as well, which is really cool. So I think this must be the first version they actually added music in for as well. So that's uh, pretty cool. But also one thing as well, moving on, look at this. This is quite cool. Having this, I don't remember this. This is a version before I started. I think I started in the next update in Alpha 16, I think is when I started playing this game. So, yeah, I don't ever remember having this cool little feature here. That's quite cool. So you click on it and then you open it like that. I like it. Nice. So if we look at materials, organics is still in here as well. But obviously carbon dioxide has been removed for a few updates now. So there it is. So looking at the other planets where we can see Venus now takes its more, the form as we know it. With its good old uh, green sort of a uh, pale sort of green atmosphere. So that's just the sort of first incarnation of Venus's new look. Mercury as well. How are we looking at Mercury? This should have that old brown texture. That's looking cool. Earth as well. So these are starting to... This update looks like it's brought the textures as we know it to the game as well. This looks to be the sort of first incarnation of the textures we know and love today. So, yeah, there's the Earth. Yeah, that looks a lot more similar to the way it does in the current version than it does... Um, in the older versions in the previous video here we have mars the old texture for mars remember this look there you go see the north pole looking pretty cool but yeah there's the old mars texture very nice indeed obviously as well series this was the first time they added the texture for series in as well which is really really nice there and obviously jupiter and saturn they've obviously been the same for a long time now uh, uranus 
obviously the, that's the old texture for Uranus and then Neptune as well that's a texture it has today too which is pretty cool so there we are and then Pluto we can actually have a peek at you as well as Pluto now has its um current texture well an early version of its current texture look at this so Pluto as we can see the detail on it is nowhere near the way it is in the current game so this is a very very early draft of Pluto's texture um, which is quite cool so look at that huh that's pretty cool so there's the early version of Pluto there very nice indeed. Also, if we look at all the orbits, Sedna's orbit is uh, still the furthest object out, um, which is pretty cool. Um, let's actually just see how fast the simulation runs, just out of curiosity, because this version seems to be performing really, really fast. Um, oh, where are we? And I want to. I also want to check the sunspots as well, because remember with the sunspots, yeah, you can still see the sun sound effect, but the sunspots are still here in this version, so we can keep an eye on them. There they are. Oh, they they disappear and change now. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. So the sunspots actually appear and disappear. Oh, that's so cool. So there's another sunspot, and that's disappearing as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we need that back in the game. That's really, really cool. That's such a nice little feature there. I really, really like that. Okay, so where are we? It's just like Jupiter's orbit's a bit glitched, probably trying to form a binary orbit with the sun or something. If we just speed it up, let's actually see how fast this actually runs. Oh, my God, you can run this really quickly. Wow. Okay, so performance-wise, this version seems to be a huge step up from the previous versions we played in the previous updates. Looks like the inner planets have just been shot out, maybe. We ran the simulation too fast. So, yeah, it looks like there was a fragment or a collision because we ran it too quickly. But, yeah, that's still pretty impressive how fast that runs. But, yeah, I've got to say, this this is really, really cool. And, actually, one thing we're going to do as well is we're going to do the good old... Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, your copy of Universe Sunks is two years out of date. I think it's a little more than that now. <laughs> so um, let's go into a new simulation. I want to do the good old Earth versus Mars collision again that we've been running tests in in all the versions. So let's see how this test performs now in this version. And also one other thing to point out as well, UI Scutty is now added because at this point in time in 2015, UI Scutty was now discovered. So that took the role of the largest star away from VY Canis Majoris, which is pretty cool. Okay, so where are we? So Mars. Oh, listen to that. If you listen carefully. The game plays a little effect when you select an object. That's cool. Honestly, would like to see that back as well. That's a really nice little feature. Having a little bit of extra sound effect there. Okay, so place uh, Mars there. Okay. Well, I'm really, really impressed with how responsive the menus are. I have to say, that's really, really cool. Right, so it's a speed up time. Let's watch as these two collide. Okay, so here we go. Mars versus Earth. Uh, can we turn off labels, please? Thank you. Okay, here we go. Right, so let's see how the game performs in this version. I'm ex I have quite high expectations for this compared to the previous uh, video with the uh, other updates, the older updates we were doing. So that was um, Alpha 14 and below. So Alpha 15, let's see what you've got. Okay, here we go. All right, so as we can see... Yes, yeah, running very smoothly as well, I've got to say. I'm not getting any lag. I can turn it as much as I want. That's really, really cool. Nice and responsive camera. So there you go, Earth versus Mars in update tw update 15. So there you go, and yeah, that's all uh, all gone in smoothly there. So we see a nice big explosion as well, very very bright indeed. I like it, and yeah, I think it's a massive improvement over um, the previous one we did with Alpha 14. So really really cool stuff indeed. And also, if we speed up time, Earth will get very very hot. Its surface texture will reset and. Yeah, that's pretty much that done as well. But what we'll do as well is we'll run the other test by throwing the collided Earth into a Neptune now. Just see how that all plays out. So we're going to put Neptune there. Okay, so let's see how this runs. So let's uh, speed up time. Come on. Okay, there you are. A little further, please. Yep. A little quicker. Don't want to go too fast, but here we go. So that's, gonna, that's about to smash into Neptune. So let's just see how this plays out. Come on, a little quicker. You can see there's a bit of a weird uh, glitch going on. If you just look carefully, it looks like the Earth's all glitchy at the moment because it's so hot. So let's just see Earth versus Neptune now. So let's uh, speed up time a bit. Watch it go in. Here we are. So it's about to enter. Okay, get rid of that. So here we are. So Earth versus Neptune. So we are, again, the game very, very responsive indeed as we turn. You can see the lighting's a bit glitchy in this version, but yeah, there you are. So make it uh, speed up a bit more. Obviously, big collision. Oh! Oh, I remember that glitch. Yeah, when you when back in the days, back in the old days of the game, you know, update 15 and 16, so I remember this when I started. Whenever you collided a rocky planet with Neptune or Uranus, they always lost their uh, texture, and then it put a random gas giant texture on. Oh, I remember that glitch. That was quite funny. So there it is. 
So as we can see, if we speed up time, that'll probably make Neptune, or what's left of Neptune, very, very hot. But yeah, there you are. I'm trying to double click on it, but it's not actually letting me select it. So that's pretty weird, but there you are. The gas giant bands. Look how the bands look when it heats up as well. The game doesn't look like that anymore as well. The way the gas giants heat up. So there you are. Yeah, it looks a whole lot different um, with a hot gas giant in this version of the game. Check it out. So there it is. And then that will just uh, fly away. Cool. But I think one more thing I want to do as well. I want to try the performance test because I've got high expectations for how well this is going to perform in this version. So let's see how it does. And also one thing to note. Look, they have changed the performance test simulations. What That wasn't the first simulation we saw in the previous video as well. So that's pretty cool. Remember this one as well? Oh, the Earth's looking a little weird there if it's oceans. But there we are. A little more laggy, but there is a lot of moons in there. So let's see. Okay, what we got next? The Galaxy Collision. How does that run? Okay, so we can see yeah, there was a few changes to the performance test simulation uh, this time around. So let's see. Remember, we had like a score of 32 and 33 in the previous video. So let's um, see how this uh, version gives us here. Okay, so collisions with the moon there. Very nicely done. Okay. Pretty cool. I think the moon textures had a change as well. I'm not sure. So yeah, there's the moon. Okay, cool. See the earth in the distance there as well. Okay. Right, what we got next? Is that it? 120 average frames a second. Oh, it doesn't give us a score anymore, so we have to go by that now. So 120 frames per second, remember that. Okay, cool. Right, so um, also one thing on the trout source. We still have all chart mode and stuff. That's the same. But one thing, I just want to see what other objects we've got in here, because you can see they look very different. It's very, very primitive to what we uh, know today. So pretty cool. So yeah, we've got Titan there. Obviously, not as many exoplanets, not as many. There's nowhere near as many stars in the main menu here. And also one thing I want to know as well. I remember this dark. You had Jacko Lantern, and you had Jacko Lantern Dark. So check these out. We're going to a new simulation. And check this out. I don't think that's in the game anymore. Dark Jacko Lantern. So you had obviously, yeah, you, know, you had the normal one, you had the dark one, and then there was also this US one as well, which is quite cool. So. Yeah, U US 2, so Universe Sandbox 2 Jack-O-Lanterns, so what do you think of that? See, so, yeah, there was actually three Jack-O-Lanterns in the game at one point, but I believe we only have the normal one on the left now. I think that's the only one we actually have, so yeah, there was actually two more that aren't in the game anymore, as far as I know, so yeah, there are both of those guys. Any other objects? Uh, New Horizons, obviously, that was added in this update as well, and yeah, there is pretty much the rest of it. I think if you go into Stars, you can probably get a few more. No! Okay, so the Stars at this point were very, very... Yeah, there wasn't many Stars you could access. Look, there's you don't even have Alpha Centauri B. So that's pretty crazy. No Proxima Centauri either that you can access. I'm guessing if you probably search it, you could probably find it. Let's have a quick look. So if I search Proxima. Yeah, okay, so there okay, so you can find it that way. So you, yeah, there's loads of objects you have to search up to access. But yeah, there you are. So that's pretty cool. So there's a there's a good uh, range um, of all the objects and versions. And you can still see as well Venus as well. Doesn't have its atmosphere on it straight away when you uh on the menu here which is quite cool but yeah there we go so that does it mainly for update 15 so i think we've covered mainly all of the uh, new bits and bobs and um all the way things have changed so yeah without further ado guys let's move on to update 16. okay everyone so welcome to update 16 or alpha 16 so now we're in september the 12th 2015 so we've taken another jump from uh, obviously update 15 so a bit of extra information as well update 15 it first came out in may but the version we were in was released in july as that's obviously when the pluto flyby was because we was in update 15.2 not the original update 15 so just a bit of extra info there so right now we're in up uh, we're in uh, september the 12th 2015 so alpha 16.1 now so here we are so this is a small update as the team gets into gear after our work of the early access. Because this is also the point where Steam, where the game released on Steam, I believe. So, yeah. Welcome to the first Steam update of Universe Sandbox as well. The first version that came out on Steam as well. So, pretty cool. So, check it out. I believe this was the first version, so I'm not exactly sure. But um, just looking at what um, Brent told me um, in our conversation, I believe he said that yeah, the, um, yeah, Universe Sandbox, as we know it. So the version we're in here, this was released in 2015, he said. So, okay, cool. Right, so looking at the changes again. So let's see what we've got this time. Okay, so the menu's super responsive once more. Look at the way... I quite like how the menu flashes up and down like that. I like that. Look at that. That's quite cool. I like that little animation. Look at that. I really like that, actually. That's cool. Okay, so as we can see, Venus now... Venus has now got its clouds, as we know it. So all of the... All of the planets as we know them they look they all look the same as they do in the current version of the game they're all looking yeah 
So the, the main eight planets, they all look the same. Pluto's got its texture um, properly implemented now. So if we head to Pluto, as we can see, looks like, yeah, Pluto's got its texture all fully incorporated in now as well. Very nice indeed. If looking at the sun as well, let's keep an eye on the sunspots. Are they on this version? No. Okay, so it looks like Alpha 16 is what we're in here. That was the update to remove the sunspots from the game. And also, I can't hear any sound effect from the sun anymore. Interesting. So no sunspots, and it looks like the sounds of the sun were removed in this version as well. So that's interesting. But what happened to the sunspots? I want to know what happened to the sunspots. They're really, really nice little cool little feature there. What happened to them? So yeah, there we are. Um, let's also um, control D. I just want to see how fast the simulation runs. So let's just see. I'm guessing this will run fairly. Yeah, that's running really, really quickly as well. Very nice indeed. How does it perform when we're... Yeah, look how quick it performs. Even when running the simulation at high speed. Look how everything performs. Very, very fast. That is lightning quick compared to the game in its current form. I mean, I'm very, very impressed with how fast this was. Look at that. Man, I only wish the game... Oh, imagine if the game could perform this quick in the current version. Because sometimes it's a little a little laggy when you open this menu. But look how fast it opens in this version. That is, a man, that is absolutely insane. And speaking of insane, look how fast this runs as well. Let's see how, how, how far can we go. So as we can see, now it's starting to struggle a bit. I mean, we are going ridiculous speeds here. Look, we can actually watch Sedna in its orbit actually go around because of how fast we're running this. I mean, this is just insane. So how do the orbits look at the moment? I mean, yeah, they're all they're all intact actually. Look, there you go. So they're all yeah, they're all sitting fairly comfortably actually. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's also one thing I want to do. I want to do the good old performance test again, and I want to see if it improves or um, goes down. So remember, our score was 120. So let's see if we get an improvement or we get a downgrade in this version. So we can sort of see how the game has evolved over time. So, oh, this is new as well. Look at this. So the gas giant around the sun or the star there. So that's pretty cool. So we can see that's a new one that's been added. Uh, we still have the earth and all the moons. Okay. See the water on it changes. That's really weird. So there you are. Okay, what we got next? So we should have the galaxy collision again. Yeah, that's in here. So we can see they've made a few changes to this um this performance test over the uh, time. So there we are. So galaxies. And then lastly, we have... Oh, Saturn versus Neptune. I remember this. Yeah. Cool. So that's one of the simulations you can actually access in the game. Cool. So that's testing the particles. And then lastly, we also have the moon collisions as well. This one looks a lot quicker than the update 15, I believe. Oh, music changed as well. Cool. Okay, there you are. Nice. Okay. So, what score are we going to get this time then? So, I think it will be better than 120. No, 112. Okay, so we've actually gone down. Although it looked quicker. I thought it looked quicker. So, apparently, we've actually lost 8 frames a second. Interesting. Okay. Right. So, there we are. And then, um, any other bits? I mean, yeah, we've got all the backgrounds are still the same. Obviously, the Milky Way background, that's still the same as um, it was in the previous update as well. But, yeah, like they said, update 16 was only a small update. So... Without further ado, yeah, we're going to move on to the next version, guys. So now we're going to hop into update 20, or update 17, I should say. And this is the beginning of 2016 now. So yeah, without further ado, let's hop onto that. Okay, everyone. So welcome to update 17 now. And I was actually wrong. This update actually did release before 2016. So we're in November the 16th, 2015 now. And as we can see, Alpha 17 introduces better looking star glows, a new Halley's Comet simulation and two values which show how similar a planet is to Earth. And yeah, the chance of it forming life. So that's the life likelihood thing and all that. So there's also a Make Pulsar 2 as well so yeah there we are so yeah not, not the biggest update either here so here we are so i'm guessing most things are the same obviously no more sunspots they're still gone milky way background that's still the same i mean most things here are going to be the same so it's all venus what's going on at venus actually what's this all about so it's atmosphere hasn't isn't working properly interesting so oh it's very very hot it's actually hotter than it normally is into the 600s venus normally sits around a uh, in universe sandbox, Venus normally sits around 400, but in this version, Venus is extra hot. So there you go. So it loses its atmosphere. Wow. Okay. So we'll see all the other planets the same. I don't know why Jupiter's looking non-spherical there. That's really weird. Looks fine here. So that's yeah, that is weird. So there we are. I'll see all the other stuff looks fine. Okay. There we are. So without further ado, I mean, I'm just there's not any there isn't really any new features here. So you can see the menu still opens really really cool. 
So I, I really, really like the way that menu works, honestly. It looks like more stars are added now. Look, so you can see the uh, database of, or the main the main list here. There's a lot more objects to choose from um, in the main object here. It looks like Pollux and Former Holt don't load up properly there. That's really weird. But yeah, there you go. So there's a full lineup of all the objects. And yeah, they um a lot more added in an hours, which is pretty cool. And also, again, we're going to run the performance tests. We're going to see. So we had 120 in update 15. Then update 16, we had 112. So let's see what update 17 gives us. So... Yeah, and then uh, we'll finish off on the, this update for the day as well, guys. So, yeah, in the next video, we're going to start with um, update 18, which I think uh, it's either 18 or 19, which is the version I started in. I can't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure as soon as I look at the dates of what update um, or what update released at what time, I should be able to work out the version I started in. But, yeah, it's definitely going to be coming up in the next episode, I reckon. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. And also, if you enjoyed this video as well, guys, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for more. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to filming the next one of these already, I have to say, as we move into the uh, 2016 era of Universe Sandbox 2. So, yeah, pretty cool. We've come quite a far away since 2008 now. Looking at the first video we did in this series where we checked out the original game. And, honestly, last video where we checked out the first versions of Universe Sandbox 2... We can see a lot has changed and there's so many things added to the first version of Universe Sandbox 2 and just massive improvements over the original game as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, going further into the future um, for the next video. And as we can see, update 17 has actually given us the best performance so far at 124 frames a second. So it's beaten both versions out. Um, yeah, so we had 120, 112, and now we're at 124. So we've had a massive improvement in performance as well so from the previous version. So, yeah, what do you think of that? So, obviously, speeding up time again. We can also run this simulation very, very quickly um, just to get a big taste of it as well. And, yeah, this still opens very, very fast and responsive as well. I'd love, I wish the game was that quick at the moment. I mean, look at that. I love that. That is so, it's so smooth and fresh and fast. I, yeah, I really, really like that. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of the history and evolution of Universe Sandbox. So today we are starting off with update 18 or actually 18.2 as that's the only version of 18 um, I can access. So now from the previous one we were in um, roughly I think it was um, November, October or November 2015 was with update 17 but now um with this update january the 21st 2016 well this update actually released the original update of 18 released at the end of 2015 so now we have uh, entered the 2016 era of universe sandbox now with um update 18.2 here and this was actually the update i actually remember when this came out so I, I was definitely playing the game before 2016 as far as i can remember i can't remember the day i got it but um, yeah, I definitely remember when this update came out and yeah, I was very very hyped for it um, with the Planet Nine So without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and see um, How the game has um, changed again in this update again We'll run all the similar like tests and stuff see how we are doing but we're looking at uh, the menu now I believe uh, oh no, they haven't added the Planet Nine here yet because remember the Planet Nine in the current game You can access it here. So that hasn't actually been added in yet. Let's actually see um Oh, it runs. I forgot how fast this system runs. Especially what we'll do first is we'll go with the good old performance test and we're going to see if anything has changed and we're going to see just how the game performs compared to the previous version. Because this update, update 18, was supposed to or was supposedly a performance update and it the main thing with it was performance. So we're going to see how that holds up here. So if we remember from the previous episode, I believe we were running around 60 frames a second. Um, I think that's the result we had. So we'll just have to see um, what we have at this update. So, yeah, honestly, I can't remember what the results were previously, but I know they were something fairly decent, I believe. So we'll just see how this runs. So we can see the galaxies are a whole lot more smoother than the previous um, episodes. Um, so, yeah, this should, uh, this should give us something good, hopefully. So I think it will finish off with the uh, collision of the moon. The asteroids hitting the moon. So there's the uh, Saturn and Neptune again. So, okay, let's see what we've got. So it should be, yeah, the moon that yellowish background yep okay so we can see the collision stuff still looking fairly similar um, to the previous updates because again this update update 18 this is generally just a uh, performance update looks like the earth over there has a collision on it if you saw that carefully I think it did I want to say the earth had a collision mark on it okay 141 frames okay so that's that's definitely better than what it was I remember so that's some seriously um, good numbers there I believe so okay there we are 
So other than that, I think that's mostly this update covered. I mean, we can also obviously check out the Planet Nine because that was when this uh, was added to um, the game. So the first update of the appearance of Planet Nine all the way over here. So here it is. And this was actually the update where I got my custom Planet Nine with its uh, cool blue shade. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, actually, one thing um, I remember in this update as well, remember, you, there wasn't any customization yet. Keep an eye on that. There still wasn't any customization at this point in the game. And I, I, I definitely started the game around this point. So yeah, this is what it was like back in the day. And actually, as far as I know, or, yeah, I remember when I was trying to get color, different color planets, you literally had to keep spawning in random rocky planets until you got one in a good looking color so you could literally just keep going for ages until you got the color you wanted but obviously there was only so many colors they could spawn in so if you wanted to have an earth like world you would have to spawn in an object like this so with more of a greenish color and also you would uh, spec it out with water so let's just uh, add a bit of water to it uh, if we just pull it to 20 degrees i mean this was practically the way you had to make earth like worlds at one point was the only way you could do it was by doing this and the best sort of looking at earth like worlds you could get was stuff like this so you could only get that sort of faint sort of green shade and that was the best you could do for earth like worlds you couldn't customize anything so um actually let's go back to um is it temperature you had the, yeah the atmosphere used to be on the temperature bar as well so we just had that on that was basically the closest you could get to an earth like world back in the day you couldn't really get much better than that because you couldn't customize the uh, surface colors and stuff and also if you were in more of a desert like world you go for something like this or a more volcanic world maybe something like that like you you were just were not it was just wasn't possible to get customization at this point so there we are and occasionally they spawned with uh, different uh, updates or not different updates different colors with the atmospheres so blue was obviously the most common but if you were lucky you sometimes got a slightly different shade so you can see this shade is more of a bluey shade this one's more of a turquoisey shade so there was a few different atmosphere colors but if you spawned in enough objects there was a way to get yellows oranges and red atmospheres as well so let's just see if we can uh, let's just try and spawn in just loads and loads and see if we can get one of those rare spawns that used to feature the different colored atmospheres so let's just see if we get lucky because i know they were possible because i used to have templates of them all so let's see is there any any uh there's a more purpley one there there's another green one so you can see there's three different colors there that you could get spawning in but there was reds oranges and yellows which were very very hard to obtain but they uh were possible in this version of the game because i remember doing it so there's an orange one so there's a rare color so oh and then we've got another orange one so there's some more rare ones well that's more of a yellow one so we've got a yellow and an orange and there should be a red color see if we can uh, see if we can spawn in a red one but you see they were way rarer than the uh, blue ones so let's see can we get anything come on give us a red one see if we can get like all the colors oh there's a um there's one there i think that was one um this one here yeah, there you go. There's the, there's the red. That was the closest to sort of red you could get. And then obviously we have the orange yellow one here. So there you are. There's a rough indicator. So you can get, yeah, you could, you could get other colours, but obviously they were a lot rarer. I think what we need to do is, before we move on to the next update, we've got to press play. Just watch them all just smash into each other there. There you go. Runs very smoothly indeed. I mean, look how well that runs. That's, that's great stuff indeed. So there we are guys, that mostly covers everything for update 18 as far as I know, because again it was just a performance update, so without further ado, we're going to move on to update 19 now. Okay everyone, so welcome to update 19 now of the game, and this was the Tidal Forces update, or I believe it was yeah, the Disintegration update, and we've taken a massive jump from the previous update at the start of uh, 2016, now we are in November. 2016 so that now brings us to the point in time where i had actually started making videos on universe sandbox so this would have been the first version i used to create videos in this game so really cool um stuff and yeah i was, I was reading through all the logs all the way between sort of march and august 2016 the this update was still in its like testing phase and i believe the vr version of the game was starting to release at that point as well so we can start to see more stuff um, happening over time the vr version of the game i'd love to try that one day but i don't have a headset unfortunately um and obviously just yeah lots and lots of time between updates um in 2016 so yeah now we're in update 19 so yeah this was the tidal forces and supernova and stuff but one thing as well the background the old background has been removed so we can see at the old background it from the previous um, update in update 18 that's now gone so now we are with the background we know and love today with the uh, milky way there's so a pretty uh, pretty cool fact there so what should we do first so first of all 
again we're going to do not the tutorials I want to do the good old performance test so let's see if we can top 141 frames a second let's see if we can get any higher than that so let's have a look oh some of the objects look a little weird there but yeah let's uh let's see how that does that so while that's playing out I'll continue to just read some of the notes. So yeah, this was the tidal forces. Now tear about planets. Planets are now vaporized by high temperatures and supernova. That's cool. Improve performance, appearance, and user control. So I wonder if the customization was in this update. I cannot remember. Also labels, new object models. This is where they added the pyramid, the police box, new horizons, the third stage of Saturn V, and there was two new music added in this track as well. Added in this version. So that's pretty cool. Oh right, excellent. Right. So let's um just let the uh just rest of this play out. So we still have the Saturn and Neptune. So yeah, next up we should have the moon when it finishes off. So first thing I want to try is obviously after we get the um obviously after we get the performance numbers, I want to try the customization. I want to see if this was the update where you could start to customize surfaces, or I don't know if that was I don't know if that came in 2017, not 2016. We can one thing we can notice here though is the back of the simulation with the moon being bombarded, the background is not yellow anymore. It's now just a normal generic stars background so that's really interesting 113 frames a second okay so between uh update 18 and 19 we've lost about 30 odd frames because we were 141 last time so yeah we've actually lost some frames there so that's interesting but yeah moving on so new update on new, new simulation sorry right random random rockies just want to spawn a spawn a bunch of these guys in okay right can you customize yet let's have a look yes you can okay so update 19 this was the update where you could actually start to customize. So you used to be able to just pick from the color wheel here, which is pretty cool. So that's where you could begin. This was the first stage of customization they added into the game, was the surfaces of rocky planets. So this was the only thing you could do. There wasn't anything else. You couldn't do atmospheres yet at all. That came way, way, way later. Materials, we can see that organics has also been removed between updates because we saw it was in the previous update we saw it was in update 18 so we can now see that yeah by the end of 2016 organics had also been removed like carbon dioxide way 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 before so that's two elements that have unfortunately uh, disappeared over time we can see it, the shadows in this version look very very mysterious especially on this object that's really weird but yeah there you are so now obviously in this update you could create way nicer looking sort of colonized worlds um, let's just put this guy to say I'm at 40 degrees, a little warm up. Can, I, can we put it to 40? Come on. Is that going to... Uh, let's see, does it let us? I mean, I'm not going to spend all day doing this, but... Okay, there we are. Okay, so let's just add a bit of water to it. Lower it down. So this is where you could start to create, obviously, as you can see, more sort of green, friendly looking sort of worlds. This was the first update you could really get to customization. You could do anything you want, any colours you want. Like, you, you know, you guys know the drill because you have it all in the modern version of the game. So, yeah. So you could just create anything you wanted, but you still couldn't do the atmosphere. The surface was the only thing you could do. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff there. Moving on, we'll also try out the Roosh Limit, as this was the update where Roosh Limit began. So we're going to put Jupiter in here. Obviously, a good example to use here. Okay, um, yeah, so, so just gonna spawn that. And then I don't want to find body, no. I want to do, let's put a, what should, we, what should we tear apart? Let's try maybe an Earth. I'm going to put it stupidly close to Jupiter, and we're going to see Roosh Limit hopefully shred it. So as you can see, Earth has been disintegrated. All of its parts are just crashing into, uh, yeah, and it's, yeah, not looking good. <laughs> oh, dear. So we'll throw a few Earths in, throw a Mars as well, just let everything just get torn to shreds. All of the inner planets, obviously no chance of survival. And we can see some of them are getting hot, vaporizing, but just being shredded up by Jupiter's gravity. One of them actually got a little larger. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> it got some hydrogen picked up somehow. That's weird. Must have scraped some off the planet itself. But really bizarre. But as we can see, Jupiter makes short work of them. So this was the first update with Rouge Limit added, which is pretty cool. If we try a large object like Uranus, I think it should shred Uranus, shouldn't it? I mean, after a while... I want to say, it's, is it shredding? Yeah, it's definitely shredding urine, as you can see. Oh, it's just been completely disintegrated there. Oh, my God, Jupiter made short work of that. Oh, man, that's pretty crazy. What if we try a Saturn? I mean, I think Saturn's just too big, but let's give it a shot. I think, I mean, can, can Jupiter Bruce Limit tear Saturn up? I think they'll just collide. Yeah, they're, they're both large enough to just end up in a collision, so that's pretty cool. Looks like one of the Mars has picked up a bit of the hydrogen. But, yeah, there you are. So you can see Bruce Limit added to the game in this version as well. And also one more thing. That was featured in this update was the if we go here the explode button if you guys remember the old explode buttons it's obviously in um powers explode so they revamped this tool in this update as well so you it did that oh i remember that yeah the object just sort of puffed up and just popped 
that was that was cool so let's do it with saturn for instance as well we'll slow it down a little more just so we can get a better look at it so power explode you press it it just sort of gets large and all of its layers just sort of rip apart which is really really cool i, I really enjoyed that i think that was a really cool sort of ex effect there so yeah you could just destroy planets like that but also one more thing as well the supernova in this update also if you blew a star up that creates a nova and also the novas would disintegrate planets this was the update where they would actually start to do that so if we uh, just let it play we can see it mercury absolutely no chance venus probably not any chance they're just losing mass mercury yeah i mean there's just no chance they're just gone so we can see it probably all of the inner objects are absolutely no chance jupiter usually survives these it does lose a bit of mass itself but yeah jupiter uh, uranus and neptune tended to not survive all the time so let's just see let's just see let's see how this plays out so we can see there we are Okay, cool. So we can see Mars actually, or Mercury and Venus, they've been reduced to absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Mars, yes, all the other. They weren't actually destroyed, but they were just completely ruined. So there you are. Jupiter as well. What happened to Jupiter? I don't know what's happened there. What's going on here? Is it just all blacked out? Oh, no, Jupiter just got completely scorched. That's weird. <laughs> right. That's really bizarre. Yeah, all of the planets. That's, so we can see this version's got a little bit of bugs in it, but yeah, there you are. So. There's a rough sort of overview of the update. Obviously, I think that this was the point where I was starting to do update reviews as well. So I mean, if you go all the way back in my playlist to the Universe Sandbox updates, you'll probably see it when I actually initially reviewed all these, which would be quite a cool view back to the uh, past as well. Maybe I should put all those in one video and just see how the games evolve from that point of view, just putting all the update videos together. I think that could be quite cool. But um, yeah, with that all said and done, guys, we're now going to finish off today's video with update 20. Okay everyone, so now welcome to update 20, or actually update 20.6.3. So we're now in April 19th, 2018 apparently, but I'm just looking at the um, I'm looking at the developer blog here. So update 20, it initially released somewhere around, uh, let's see here, so somewhere around June 2017. So it looks like, if that's all correct, this update, June 2017 all the way to April 2018 was the span of update 20. So this update was around for a long time and I've probably made... 100 over 100 videos with this update so this was the update it was a small update but obviously this is the final version of update 20.6 there was obviously stuff in the previous versions of update 20 so just going over the uh the patch notes here so this was um the new foundation update so it had rewritten user interface uh different code architecture disintegration teleportation and a lot more in the vr version of the game oculus rift support dozens of small improvements and fixes and stuff like that so let's just see let's just see how the game performs so if we just open the menu here Let's have a little look. Oh, we can start to see a bit of loading lag. So update 20 introduced the loading lag that we have at the moment. Okay, interesting. Planet 9 is obviously added to the menu now as well. So there we are. Obviously, the menu's looking more similar to the way we know and, lo know and love today, really. So, yeah, I mean, that is fairly similar to what we have at the moment. This is the update. The Tesla was added as well. Oh, it's one of the old phones going off there right so um yeah the tesla road so that was when that was added so pretty cool stuff indeed um what we'll do as well is oh yeah your universe sandbox is three years out of date oh man right and um, what we'll do is yeah we'll go with a good old performance test again we're going to see how um what we get so obviously the first one we had 141 wasn't it then we had 120 119 or whatever it was in the previous update so let's see what this update gives us but when it's also started to take screenshots as well it didn't use, it didn't do that in the previous ones this, uh, this version has also turned that gas giant into a red dwarf as well, if you look there. That used to be a red dwarf, a brown dwarf, I'd say. Now it's a red dwarf in that simulation. What have we got next? Earth and all the moons. Oh, man, look how laggy this one is. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So you can see the game starting to struggle a bit more with all of the 500 moons. What have we got next? Uh, the galaxy collision. I, I, I don't think this will be as high as um, update. Uh, 18 years yeah, update 18 there's no way this is going to be 141 is my guess don't know how it will compare to update 19 though that was about um, what was that was that uh, 119 wasn't it or something 123 so yeah let's see how this version performs oh it looks like this uh this um simulation now has the milky way background instead of the generic black background we can see the particles are also looking a lot more different as well which is pretty cool on the moon we can see it's um getting some water added to it you can see a bit of frozen ice patches oh it's actually got water on it oh my god what's happening there <laughs> right so let's see what we get 125 so we've actually gone up a bit gone up by two frames a second between update 19 and update 20 it didn't look as quick though i have to say so that was weird um but yeah there you are so update 29 or update 20 uh no i don't need to send these are oh this version's out of date right okay cool uh let's see any new simulations that are added to the tesla rosie we can see this is when all these were 
um, added in here. Ultimate Engineered Solar System. I think I remember this. What was this about? How many planets can you cram into the Hatable Zone? Oh, I remember this. This is really cool. So if you speed this up, it had all planets in perfect sort of orbit distances. So they could all run perfectly. Like, this was really, really cool, this was. So if you open the menu up, you could have loads of Hatable Worlds sitting in the correct sort of area. And just have them all around the sun. This was really cool. I remember this. So... Yeah, there we are. Obviously, loads of other up, uh, loads of other stuff uh, crammed here. The Trappist One, um, if you see here, I believe Trappist One was added at some point in Update Twenty as well, because this was discovered in um, from the solar system. Oh, this. Uh, okay, so in February twenty seventeen, they announced the discovery of the four additional exoplanets. I remember when this was added. I made a video on this um, in um, so it must have been around February March twenty seventeen is when this update came out um, when it added Trappist to the game. So yeah, I remember this. I so, remember Trappist one all the way back in twenty seventeen when that was first and that all the, the four extra planets were first announced. Because remember, it was originally found twenty fifteen, but then yeah, in twenty seventeen they found the additional planets. So yeah, that completed the uh, whole Trappist system, which is really cool. So yeah, I remember, remember good old Trappist one that was added in this update at some point. The solar eclipse as well. Remember the solar eclipse in 2017? I actually remember the day. I was still at school at that time, I, I think. No, 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 I wasn't. No, never mind. Um, August 21st, 20, 2017. Close up. So remember this? So this was over the America run area, as you can see here. North America, eclipsed by the moon. Blocking the sun out. So if we actually land, let's actually land roughly, uh, let's land somewhere near Florida. Okay, so let's go all the way down here. Look up. Look at the sun. There you go. So that's probably what you would have seen from Florida. So the moon blocking out the sun like that. Really, really cool. So there you go. So parts of 14 different states from Lincoln City, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina went dark as the moon's shadow passed over them. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. The United States witnessed the first solar eclipse in 38 years. So there you go, 2017. So that was this update. of Yeah, update 20 also had an update for this eclipse added as well. Really, really cool stuff indeed there. So it went over the Atlantic Ocean. And then it would have obviously uh, flown out of... Um, location again see there you are pretty cool um little bit there so yeah that was added in the game cassini collision with saturn at the end of 2017 as well so here you are because remember this version of update 20 this version goes all the way to 2018 so well, everything that happened in 2017 is involved um, in this update so there's cassini on its final mission and then it went straight into saturn there oh dear oh dear so remember that fateful day Cassini collision with saturn on september the 15th 2017 i feel so long ago now <laughs> wow we so it's pretty cool that they added that as a little tribute to the probe in this game so there you are so that was all seeing the saturn system oh that's really cool so there's the uh, yeah we did the solar clips uh yeah so yeah overall a lot of cool things um added remember the v source video if anyone saw that he did the solar system with the black hole instead of the sun video and then they um added a little thing for him in the game as well that was really cool so yeah, there you are. Remember this as well. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of this, but remember this object, which is really really cool. So remember this guy. It's slung in our solar system, and then it just got slung right out again. It's an interstellar object visitor to our solar system. That was really really cool. So yeah, that's really cool. So the first known object to ever have left another star system and entered ours. So it entered our system, and then it also got ejected once more. So if we actually just run time. So whereabouts is it in 2021 or 2022? So right now that object is past the orbit of Uranus. So I mean, we're in, I know we're in 2022, but yeah, around 2021, it's probably around the year of the um, Uranus-Neptune sort of distances now. So I'll see if we continue to add time. And I'll see as the years pass, we can see that by 2035, it's the distance of Eris roughly. And I'll see if we can keep going. It's going to pass this Sedna area, and it's just going to keep going out forever and leave our solar system. So. Pretty, pretty insane stuff there. So there you go. So we can see 2060. So where is it in 2100? <laughs> 2070, 2080. See, yeah, by that point, it's just long gone. So 2090. So yeah, look very, very long gone by then. But yeah, there you go. So there's a cool little uh, thing there. So that was October the 19th, 2017. Really, really cool stuff indeed. But yeah, there we go. And also, uh, lastly, the good old Tesla Rosa simulations. This was the start of the uh, 2018 um, era of Universe Sandbox. So this was uh, yeah, the, the old Tesla Rosa added in here as well. So 
really, really cool stuff indeed there. So there we are, guys. That does it for the uh, History and Evolution of the Universe Sandbox. I believe this is part four of this series now. So yeah, those were updates 18 to 20. Today we are starting our journey in update 21 here. Um, I'm actually in update 22 at the moment, actually, but luckily we can go back to the previous update notes, which is pretty cool when you uh, boot up the game for the first time. So, yeah, welcome to um, update 22. But before we uh, get onto that, we need to go over the uh, update 21, as unfortunately I cannot access that version of the game. But luckily it was mainly just a language. They just added no more languages into the game, that, so there wasn't really much new content in the game itself, which was quite um, quite good. So we're not really missing out on much, um, thankfully. But yeah, we'll, go have, we'll have a quick run through of update 21 so as we can see universe sandbox now supports 20 plus languages so i remember when this came out actually so yeah it was all just all just language stuff really so we can uh, hop on to the next update which is 21.1 which is a history of jupiter's moons so that i um, just had a whole simulation and all about that then we had update 21.2 which was the uh, windows mixed reality support so it's all just little minor updates here and then update 21.3 the extremes of our solar system that's when it added the parker space probe simulations in then the new horizons um bits and bobs in as well in update 21.3 so at the moment the very first update 21 it roughly came out in around june 2018 is what i can uh, pretty much work out so yeah june 2018 but obviously as time uh, time progresses we go to august and then i believe um update 22 was september 2018 if i remember right i'm just i'm just looking now october no no it wasn't the update we're in right now so 21.3 this was october 2018 so if we go to November 2018, is that what we see? Tw update tw yeah, update 22. So if we go here, so the universe just got bigger. Steam Workshop supports. So that was the update where that um, all came out, and that's the update we're in at the moment. Is update 22, and then obviously there was a few uh, more versions of 22 because we're in the very latest version of 22. So it had the far out update where it added um, that object in here, which is really cool. And then um, lastly, the revamp vapor and engine experiments. So as we can see here. Pretty cool stuff. And then a big day for physics. That's the uh, update we are in at the moment. So you can see as time evolved. Yeah, update 22.3. Pretty cool stuff. So I think this takes us into the beginning of 2019 now, if I want to say. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, the patch notes and the, the history um, on the blog at the moment. But I believe, yeah, I believe this. we are now in the 2019 era of Universe Sandbox. I believe this uh, update 22 got us into 2019. So, yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. Very, very nice stuff indeed. So, right, without further ado, let's actually explore. So, first of all, we're going to have a look at customization because I believe this was the update or update 22. I believe at this point we there may have been more customization. Um, I'm going to go to a random, let's just go to a random body out in the uh, okay, here you go. So, remember, we had high elevation and all that, so that was available in the previous update. No atmosphere yet. No atmosphere and no bands. Okay, so we're still only on the phase or the um, era of surface customization. You can't do atmospheres just yet in update 22. So, pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. So, yeah. Appearance, the only stuff you can do is the colors. Can't do anything else other than that currently. So, yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty funky stuff there, as we can see there. Uh, menu speed, let's open it up. Yeah, nice quick menu speed. And what we'll do as well, like we've done in every single video, so we can compare... What we're going to do is we're going to do the good old performance test. So I think last um, video, I think the highest we got was about 141 in update 19. And it was either update 18 or 19. But yeah, we saw that um, after update 18 or 19, it did slow down in update 20. So let's just see if update 22 can give us any better results compared to the previous episode. Because that would be quite interesting to see. So we'll just have to wait and just, um, just wait and see what what the game gives us here. i want to say at this simulation we're in right now that's the one that usually causes the most trouble for lagginess so it'll be interesting to see what sort of results that gives us still got the good old galaxy collision we should be seeing the galaxy collision change soon when the galaxy up when we get to the galaxy update uh, later down the road so that'd be that'd be quite cool actually so saturn and neptune as well okay cool i don't remember the toolbar being at the bottom during these uh these um tests so that's uh, pretty interesting and lastly we should have the moon and the earth yep okay so let's just see how the collisions on that. I wonder if that water glitch still shows up for, that we saw in the previous video because that was quite weird when it just added like patches of water. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, look at that. That is that is pretty strange when it does that. You can see it's like adding ice and all that. It's very very weird. So okay. So that's the end of the test. So what is our result? 105. Oh, we can see we've had quite a drop then from the previous versions. Interesting stuff there. Okay. 
Uh, no, we don't need to send that because we're in an old version anyway. Okay, uh, simulation-wise, obviously, we went through all of the uh, bits and bobs there. So, obviously, the Parker Spray Strad, that's now added. The Voyager 1 and 2, this is obviously in 2019. So, yeah, pretty cool. Very cool indeed. So, we can see roughly when this update would have came out is around this sort of timestamp on the um, bottom left here. So, pretty cool because this update was released at roughly the start of 2019. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, you can see Voyager 1 over here and then Voyager 2 down there after leaving the Neptune area. So, you can see... Pretty cool. You can see uh, where Neptune is now from where Voyager left it. So that's uh, that's pretty cool stuff indeed. Very nice. And then obviously Voyager 1, that left Saturn originally. So that would have came from the uh, Saturn sort of orbit over here somewhere. So yeah, pretty cool stuff indeed there. But obviously we've done all this in previous videos over the years. So without further ado, I'm going to hop onto the next version, um, what we can check out, which is update 23. Okay, everyone. So now, welcome to the update 23 era of Universe Sandbox. So now we've jumped all the way to August 2019. So we're in update 23.2. But um, obviously, if we go back, we can see all of the versions of update 23. So originally, update 23 was the Beyond the Milky Way updates. So that's when they added the new Galaxy improvements in, which was a really, really cool update. I remember this. This was really, really awesome. So here we can see added the elliptical, obviously, all the other galaxies, the spiral elliptical, all the irregulars in. On it. That was a really, really cool update. I remember that. Um, so, yeah, we had the Beyond the Milky Way update. Then we had the Galactic Cleanup. So, that was just um, improvements and stuff, which is cool. And then, obviously, there's a few more other buttons and stuff. And then, lastly, the final version of 23 was the Saturn's New Moons update, which just added the, yeah, the new moons around Saturn. So, pretty cool stuff. So, let's go ahead and clip that close. Again, we're going to run the performance test before we check anything else out. I want to see what the game can do. Let's see if we can beat the frames from the previous version of the game as well. And um, yeah, we'll just have to see um, which version comes out on top between update 20, was it 22 and 23? Yeah, so the interesting stuff, the galaxy collision should be different in this version as well as this was the version that added all that in. So yeah, we should be in for a nice surprise here seeing the galaxies collide. So how's this simulation doing? Here's the troublemaker sim. Every version we've played, I think this simulation's always been the hardest one to run. The Earth and 100 moons, I think. Okay, what we got next? The new galaxies. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the new galaxy collision. Check it out so we can see how the game's evolved here as well. Okay, right. So we're going to see him collide. The camera's kind of weird. Oh, the camera's a little weird there. Okay. Got the good old Saturn and Neptune. That's been around for a while as well now. So looking cool. Okay, and then we should have the moon collision here. So let's see if that water bug's fixed or the ice all being added. So update 23. So let's see what we can uh, let's see what update twenty three brings to the table. No, you can still see the glitches of adding all the watery icy effects to it. Okay, that's really weird. Right, so there you go. Now I want to say that performed better, but honestly, it's quite hard to work out. Oh, only eighty. Oh wow, we, whoa, we lost a lot there. So update twenty two to twenty three. That's a huge, huge loss in performance there. Wow, we okay. Interesting stuff indeed. Right, okay. So, other things um, to just go over. So, we're going to go over the galaxies quickly. So, this is also the update where we could um, check these out. So, where were we? So, galaxies. So, this was the new galaxy improvement update. So, you could get all of the different uh, bits in. I don't want to place too many. But, um, yeah, this was this was really, really cool. So, I'll see all the different types of galaxies, which are really, really awesome. So, yeah, and we still have that in the uh, current version of the game today. But I think they're a little more primitive in this version. I don't think you can colour them or anything. Yeah. Um, they were literally just as they were. You couldn't change much about them other than the star amount and bits and bobs like that. If we go to the Milky Way itself, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't change any colours. You could only do very, very little. You could obviously change the galaxy types and stuff like that, but you couldn't really do much else. You can obviously can change all of the all of the different types, um, from the elliptical galaxy types to the irregular, which is quite cool. So there it is. So you could have yeah, you could have literally anything. But you couldn't change the colours just yet, because that obviously comes down the road, so We'll go back into a new simulation now. So just a few other things to note as well. Obviously, menu speed, that's um, very nice if we open all of this up as well. Um, Customisation-wise, as far as I know, it was still at this point. You couldn't do anything other than surfaces still. I think the interface may have had a change. I don't know. It's still using this version, okay? So that was the only thing you could do. There wasn't any atmosphere customization. There wasn't anything else. The only thing you could do still at this point was the good old um, surface colours. So there we are. And obviously, onto simulations. Here we can see the uh, 100th anniversary of the, I remember the general relativity, the flyby of the asteroid, the OK asteroid. And there's also all the up stuff in the previous updates down there as well. So, yeah, pretty cool. But we'll go over the um, we'll go over the galaxy collision in this version of the game as well. Because we didn't really get a good view of it in the uh, 
test there. So let's just see the Milky Way and Andromeda collide. You can see the, and how much a bigger Andromeda actually is there. Wow, we. So let's uh, watch them go in together. So there you go. There's a better view of uh, the galaxies colliding there. Oh, big, uh, big smash and smash and bash indeed there. I think if you just speed it up, they just break it. Yeah, it all just breaks. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there you are. But yeah, that's um, that's a brief overview of update 23. So now we're going to take a jump to probably one of the most controversial updates and highly debated updates in the, the history of this game, actually. And that is update 24, the surface grid update. So let's go ahead and check that out, guys. Okay, everyone. So unfortunately, I couldn't access t update 24 of the game. So I've had to hop into update 25 instead. Unfortunately, nothing popped up. So we can't really read back at the uh, patch notes. But yeah, first of all, going over update 24, which is the version I would have liked to have been in. That was the very, very sort of controversial and highly debated Surface Grids update. And I remember when this update first came out, a lot of people were not happy with the sort of performance of the game, the bugs. A lot of people, the bugs at this time were quite um, hectic. I mean, I, I really like I really like the concept of the update, but obviously I would also agree that the bugs it did um, it did upset a lot of people. And unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people I know back from the old days of the game, a lot of them actually quit the game for good with this update so that was um quite unfortunate but luckily most of those original bugs are kind of um i think i believe they're sourced now and also there's still bugs are off around but i think that's just normal for any game development really but and yeah update 24 this was a surface grid and laser update so for instance if we want to go to earth this was the update where you could uh check all of these bits out so if we open it up here um we could press um it was this button wasn't it and you could get all of these stats up which is really, really cool. I remember when this first came out, I was like, oh, I think I was pretty amazed. Oh, these are all these extra settings. They're really, really awesome. So you could access all of that. Um, as we can see as well, the appearance tab was added to the game as well. And we can see the uh, atmosphere color and the cloud color have been added. I'm not sure if that was update 24 or update 25 it did this. But as we can see, it's, it's still a change over update 23 because now you can do the atmospheres, which is a thing that we were waiting for for a long time. You, we really, really wanted atmospheres. Obviously, cloud customization as well you could do, which is really, really awesome. So, yeah, it was really, really awesome to find. And the interface. Don't forget the interface as well. So, you could finally see... Or you could finally have a little more customization to your planets and make more unique style of objects. So... Yeah, for instance, we could just made um, a red earth there as well. But yeah, just going over the rest of the updates to 24. So they added lasers in as well. If you remember those, they were, they were pretty cool. Um, interface improvements. Oh, yes. Let's have a look at the interface. So you'll see this all changed. This all wasn't here in the previous update. And also city lights as well. You can do um, do the city light colors, which are, which are pretty cool. So there they are. And also if we open up the ad menu, I believe this was the update that changed things up. So we can see a massive, massive lag spike. When opening the menu. So I remember Surface Grids was the update where it really started to get really, really slow when you tried opening the ad menu for the first time. Like if we saw in the previous versions, it was like lightning fast. But this version onwards, you can see it's a lot slower than it used to be. And it also... Um... Okay, so yeah, it also had... Um... And it, and the... Oh, it's all got my custom objects are showing now. Cool. So all of the... Uh... These are the objects I have in the current version of the game, actually, which are quite cool. So yeah, they're all in there. So the game can start reading them now. But, um, yeah, if that was um, update 24 of the Surface Grid. So, yeah, just moving on. So, that was in... If we just look at the history. So, this was November 2019. So, we're now into the 2020 era of Universe Sandbox, leaving update 24 behind us. So, if we go into February of 2020. So, that was the retrospective of 2019. So, we'll take another jump. We'll go to March. So, this was update 25. Okay, so the I Like My Tidal Heat update, update 25. So, we've taken a jump from the end of 2019, and now we're in March 2020. So, this was update 25. It brings significant improvements to the temperature and surface simulations, adding stability and accuracy. Okay, that was, yeah, that was cool. Um, oh, and this was also the update where they got rid of Universe Sandbox 2. So, if we look at the menu now, Universe Sandbox, this update, update 25 was the update that got rid of the zero or the up got rid of the two i should say not the zero where'd i get that from so the two is silent just call this universe sandbox we've gotten rid of the two where when loading the game for the update you may notice a migrating data message oh yeah i remember that so yeah it changed um, it changed all the settings over so this was the end of universe sandbox 2 and it's when they just changed the game back to universe sandbox and then the original game was called Universe Sandbox Legacy. So you've got Universe Sandbox Legacy and Universe Sandbox, which used to be Universe Sandbox 2. 
So they've changed that. But yeah, I know a lot of people still say in the comments, Universe Sandbox 2, um, this and that. But yeah, it hasn't been Universe Sandbox 2 for over a year now. And it's been quite a while. But yeah, also we still know it as Universe US 2. I mean, I think that's just the sort of agreed name for it, really. US 2, and then obviously US 1, or just US for the uh, original game. But um, yeah, this was the update where it just became Universe Sandbox as we know it today. So you can sort of see the evolution into today's version of the game as well, which is um, pretty cool. But yeah, well, while, we're, while we're still just going over, we're going to run the performance test as well. See how that behaves, and I'll just go over the rest of the notes. So I believe um, this this also added the hot swappable ob yeah the swappable um, button in the game, which is really really cool. So um, yeah, that was um, that was pretty cool. So yeah, we'll move on. So March twenty twenty. So let's now go to April twenty twenty. Was any update in there? Um, oh yeah, the surface grid improvements. Um, in that sort of era, if we go to April, we'll go to May 2020. So that was uh, pretty cool. So, oh, they were actually hiring for someone at that point. That's pretty cool. So you can re it's really cool going back through all the history of um, all of these, I have to say. July 2020, is there another update there? Okay, so it had some supernova effects, um, temperature simulations. So this was update 25.2. So I believe this is the update we're in at the moment, actually. So update 25.2... Okay, so I remember. Okay, so update twenty five point two was the the even more color in space update. So this was the update that added the atmosphere color, the cloud color, the interface color. So pretty cool. And this update came out in July of two thousand and twenty. So it's been over a year. The game has changed a lot in a year. Then obviously adding the chance of um all of those in. So. Yeah, that was the update where we got the customization and stuff. But, um, okay, oh, I've just switched back to the uh, game as well. So 60 FPS. So we have lost, over the last few updates, we've lost we've lost almost double our performance. So if we go back to update, let's say it was update 18 or 19 from the previous episode, we had 100, I think we had 131 frames a second in that update. But we can see we're under half. We have lost half the frames a second. Wow, we, and obviously we noticed that when we opened the menu. Oh, no, I didn't want to say... Okay, well, I've sent it. Oh, well. But, yeah, the, it's mainly with the menu as well. Like, when we first opened the menu in the game, it takes really, really long time to open. But in those old versions, it was instantaneous. You can see that, yeah, this this update, 24 or 24, the surface grids onwards really slow my game down, as we saw from the results there. I mean, that's uh, pretty interesting how we can see all the updates before surface grids. They were all above roughly, what, 100 uh, frames a second. But since the surface grids, we've taken a massive toll, and we've lost over 40 to 60 um, frames a second there. That's pretty crazy stuff. But it's probably just because the game has to simulate more of the, the all the grids and stuff. I'm guessing that takes up more um, more power on the CPU and stuff. So, yeah, it just takes up more frames a second, really, just um, trying to run it all. So, yeah, pretty pretty crazy stuff there. But obviously, if we go back, so customization once more. So the update, we're in 25.2. So this was the final version of update 25 that I can access. So obviously, this was the more color in space update. So you could uh, add the customization. And this was a huge... When this came out, this was huge. I mean, it was so amazing that you could finally get more customization in and just do whatever you wanted to the uh, the planets even our own versions you can make custom variants of all of the planets which are really cool and in game you didn't have to mod the files anymore which was a huge huge bonus for us who can't mod because yeah it was quite complex doing it back in the day so yeah it's really really cool you could um finally access this in the game and it's yeah still um still a massive part of um it all today really isn't it but yeah there we are guys so that does it for the history of universe sandbox updates 20 um all the or was it well, where did we start today because we did skip a few updates but yeah that does it for um all of this today so we started on um what was it oh i've, I've completely forgot i've completely had a mind uh, fart there so yeah we were on update 22 we started off today wasn't it because we couldn't access 21 so yeah we started in 22 and now we're in 25 so that leaves us with one final episode next week where we go over update 26 27 and obviously 28 which is the current version of the game so we've almost caught up to the present day but yeah, we leave uh, today's episode off in the midpoint of 2020, so July 2020. So we're in the finale of the history and evolution of Universe Sandbox. So if you remember last episode, we finished off in update 25, where we had gone through updates 21 to 25. And we saw that uh, customization really had a massive increase in those updates. But today... We actually started in update 27, as unfortunately I couldn't get update 26 to run. But just going over what update 26 actually was. So this was around October of uh, 2020, and it was the reimagined experience update, which was um, 26. So it's basically just virtual reality um, updates, but update 26 also had loads of sub-updates. So it had the Star Fusion and Brown the Wharf update. So that's obviously when you increase the mass of a gas giant, it starts the fusion process, and then eventually it becomes a Red Dwarf if you make it large enough. 
Then in December of 2020, we had update 26.2, which was end in 2020 with a bang. So that was the uh, craters had the surface damage. Um, that was what was um, featured in that update. So yeah, surface damage in craters. And um, I believe it had um, explosions and more accurate vaporization of um, objects and stuff. So that was where the year of 2020 finished off. And then into uh, 2021 now. So into this year, um, up in February, we had update 26.3, which was a splish splash filling a bath update which um, increased collision fragments and frame rates um, and water distribution, which was um, pretty cool. So it was uh, oceans filling like a bathtub. Yeah, I remember when this came out earlier this year. That was pretty cool. And then into um, March, I think it's, yeah, or no, May, I should say. May was the Fast and Flurious update, which is update 27, which we are, um, that's what we're in um, currently at the moment. So this was the snow simulation improvements, more detailed temperature maps, better performance, new cloud visuals, and... Um, Oh yeah, yeah. This was the one with the cloud visuals, wasn't it? So yeah, this was this was cool. I, I I did like this. I think this was in recent times. I think this is probably one of my most favourite ones, just because of, you can change the clouds. So if we open this up, obviously you can do all of this now, which I, I really like the thick clouds personally. They're my favourite. But I think it's I think it's so cool. You can just do that. And also, if you look at Earth now, you can sort of make it a little more realistic while increasing the cloud amount. I think it looks. I think it's really really cool. You can do that. So yeah, that was um, what was featured in this. But well, um, yeah, two months old now this version. So pretty cool um, but what we're going to do is i'm just going to run the old performance test like we've been doing in all of these videos i'm just going to go over the rest of the uh, patch notes in the meantime so this update also featured superior snow uh, simulation and then um obviously lots of stuff to do with the um the old surface grid and, and bits like that so it also had um more customization for cloud visuals um they added new human objects in like all of the different um shapes and cylinders and all that uh which is pretty cool and there was also um object visibility so you can see all objects that would be normally impossible to see. So if you remember all the way back in episode one of this series, all the way back in episode one where we checked out the original version of the game and there was a feature where we could make all of the planets appear larger, well it turns out that was actually added in this update and I never knew about it. I never noticed it was added. So we're going to check that out very, very shortly after um, this has finished because that's something that was really really cool now if you remember that video i said i'd love to see that in the current game but it turns out it's been here the whole time they added it recently in update 27 which is pretty cool oh look at this one look they've actually added water to the uh so you can sort of see how this simulation has evolved as well which is really really cool you can see like little bits of water are added with the materials in there so pretty cool stuff so let's see what sort of score we got so 42 frames a second okay so we're sort of still on the decline i think from the previous episode so yeah, it's, um, that's a bit annoying, but oh well. So um, let's just quickly, uh, yeah, don't send that. Uh, what we'll do is, I'm going to go into one of the old, I'm going to go into the, one of the custom solar systems. I want to try out this new setting. I think that'll be really, really cool. So anyways, that's how do we actually access this setting? So it's a view object visibility. Okay. Right. So object visibility. Okay, so it is, I think it's on custom. I think, I've, I've never actually used this setting, so... Um, this will be interesting, right? So, what, what should we use? So, we use um, uh, let's just go by name. I'll go into the enhanced solar system just so we can, uh, yeah, so we can see everything nice and easy. Okay, so here we are. So, we've got obviously custom system here. So, what we need to do is we go to the view settings, we open up the menu here, and it's somewhere here we do it. So, I think it's object visibility. I think is it something here? I'm not. I'm just trying to look at the actual settings because I'm not exactly sure how you find this. So it's object visibility underneath the view tab. Okay, so there should be like a little arrow we can open here. Okay, here we go. So object scales. So if I do this, there you go. So this is what was in the original up, or original version of the game, the original Universe Sandbox game. And I was like, we need this in the current version. But it turns out it was actually added earlier this year and i never knew about it so yeah in may 2021 so i mean it's not been in the game that long but awesome look at it it's so cool i love it look at it and then also you can increase so let's do that again um i mean how cool is that look at that that's so cool honestly that is so awesome so you could do that you can see planet nine <laughs> hey so that is that is really really cool so obviously you can make it small large you can make it huge <laughs> hey so it's just uh let's just see how that all appears so oh check it out <laughs> it says planet nine so where, where's earth should we go to earth 
Okay, so, um... Oh, it's so weird when you zoom in. So let's actually head to Earth. Just look in the night sky now and just see sort of what, what, like, what exactly can you see here? I mean, there's Neptune over there. That is awesome. So let's just land somewhere over here in California. Um, and let's have a little, uh, have a little look around in the sky. So... There's Planet 9. Never be able to see that normally. Um, because we don't even know if it's fully confirmed. It is all the other planets. You can see Venus. Uh, there's Chiron, on one of the outer objects. Neptune there. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, can we see any of Jupiter and Saturn anywhere? There's um, the Sun, Mars, Mercury. There's Jupiter as one of the asteroids. Uh, Vesta over there. You've got Sedna. There's Planet 9 again. Oh, that is that is awesome. Uh, what's that? Haumea over there. That is such a fun little setting. I'm so glad that's been added back because that was that is awesome. So there you go. So this was secretly added in this update. Whoa! If you make them really large, look at Jupiter. It wasn't even like a full sphere shape. Look at it. What is going on there? Oh, that's so weird. But it becomes like a weird hexagon shape almost. Oh my god, that is awesome. So yeah, there's all the uh, there's the whole solar system. If you zoom out, super large version of the solar system. Oh, that is so cool. So there we are. But also, if you go back to realistic, it just goes back to how it should be. So that's awesome. Really, 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 really cool. Uh, that's been added. And yeah, I didn't know it was there. So yeah, that was the object visibility in uh, May of 2021 with the uh, update 27, the original release of update 27. So awesome stuff indeed there. Moving on into June of 2021. This was the clouds in motion updates. This was update 27.1. And this was the update where we could uh, simulate the cloud speed. And um, stuff like that, and then the easier appearance editing and stuff like that. So they just made the customization tab um, a lot easier to work in that update, really. So um, that was cool. And then uh, moving on to August of 2021, we're almost at the present day. That takes us into update 27.2, the final release of update 27. And this was the individual object simulation manipulation. So there's the atmosphere adjustments um, update as well. So you could, this is where you could do the opaque atmosphere. So for instance, if we go to Venus here, go all the way to appearance, go to the atmosphere. And this is where you could play with this option here. So that was, that was a really cool feature. And this was something that people have been asking for for a long time as well. So it's great to see it was finally added. And just uh, playing with my custom Venus here, I kind of want to make a new version of the custom Venus now that you can actually do this. I didn't even think to do that. But we'll see, that's really, really thick and bright. But if I just dim it a bit, just slightly see the surface and the clouds. I think that would make quite a... I think that would be quite a good update to the custom Venus, actually. I have to have a little play with that and try and find um, what looks the coolest. Because in theory, I could change the cloud colour as well. Just like, try and make it look really, really awesome. So, huh. That could be, that could be cool to mess around with, actually. So... Yeah, that was the um, update added the opacity. So that's obviously one of the latest features in the game. And that does it for the update 27 era of Universe Sandbox. So now, moving on to the latest release, update 28. All right, everyone. So welcome to the end of our journey of the history and evolution of Universe Sandbox now, as we are in the present day now. So we're now in update 28. So this was the code name firing update. And this update was roughly around September of 2021. So obviously still fairly recent. I mean, just over a month ago now, really. So yeah, we've traveled a long way all the way back from what was it originally in the first game? It was all the way back in like 2008. And now we're all the way in 2021. So this is, um, it's been a long journey and we have seen how the game has evolved from being very, very basic and primitive to how very complex all the customization you can add. Because remember a few videos ago, you couldn't customize anything. And now you can pretty much customize every setting of the planet in game and stuff. I mean, it's absolutely awesome. So without further ado, obviously there's the full read up of the um, update here. So this was the shocking collisions, the impact of heating, and then just a few other highlights, like additional information, just a, a few bits and bobs like that. And yeah, this takes us in the current version of 28. So if we just have a look here, this is update 28.0.3. So we're still in yeah, the, ver the base version of 28. I don't know if they're going to do any like 28.1 or, or 2 or whatever, but yeah, it could be... Um, you never know down the line. We'll probably, I reckon we'll probably see maybe an update before the end of the year. But yeah, I have to wait and see with that really. But while we're just... Um, yeah, we'll do the old performance test just to finish uh, finish it off. And uh, so we've done it in every update we've played. I think that'd be really cool. So we can see this simulation has changed a bit. Some of the atmospheres have got thicker. Or they've got like a thick blue atmosphere now, which is quite cool actually. I don't know if that was in the previous um, version or not. Um, so here we have obviously this simulation again. So yeah, most of it's all the same. But we can even see how the demo simulation here, the uh, performance test simulation has changed. Because originally it looked completely different. There's obviously a few simulations that have survived all the way throughout. But yeah, some are added, some moved. 
yeah, pretty pretty interesting stuff there. So that'd be um, quite cool. But yeah, while we're just going through this, guys, I really, really hope you've enjoyed um, this series of the evolution and history of Universe Soundbox as well. I'll make sure to combine them all into one big episode as well. I think that'd be really, really cool. And yeah, I'd like to thank the developers as well um, for having a little watch into these, um, and especially Brent, who uh, gave me the version or the original version of Universe Soundbox in the first place. So he's one of the... Um, guys on the team if you didn't know so yeah brent massive thank you to him as well and yeah massive thank you for um yeah checking out um these videos i don't know if you've seen all of them but i know you've definitely had a peek at a few of them so a huge thank you to you um for doing that as well really really appreciate it and yeah just thank you very much indeed um but yeah just as we uh, finish off this simulation now let's see what our final score is in this performance test so our last one was 42 so we've gone up to 52 now so we've had an increase from update 26 and 20 or 27 i should say up into update 28 now so pretty cool stuff there uh, no, what? why not? Let's send it. So, there we are. So, current version of the game, why not? So, there we are. So, that takes us, obviously, to the present day of the game. So, remember the menu down here? Remember how primitive and um, this used to be? Well, look how complex it is in, obviously, the current version of the game now. So, all of the different objects you can do in there. All of the human objects that have been added over time, like the cube. See, obviously, these are all the more recent objects down here. The pigeon, all the way to, like, these, the pyramid, all, all of this. So, yeah, pretty, pretty... Um, awesome stuff indeed but yeah just as we finish up i think one more thing i think in, in the terms of customization i know we haven't had this in the game this isn't in the game but i'm thinking one thing that's never really been done is gas giant atmospheres now i'm wondering is that possible if any developer if you're watching just a little suggestion i know a lot of us um players have wanted this for a long time but the ability to add an atmosphere onto a gas giant and also be able to customize it the way as normal i think that's probably I, obviously, I can't speak for everyone, but I know a lot of people have always wanted this. So, I'm speaking for I'm speaking on behalf of some of us. But w would it be possible to add atmospheres onto gas giants, and then obviously be able to customize and maybe even cloud? But I think atmospheres, I think they I think they just need to. I think gas giants. I think that's just a tiny little thing they need, just to make them a little more up to date with obviously the rocky planets in the game. Because the rocky planets have had way, way, way more updates and customization. Than obviously, the gas giants. The only things gas giants have had is the band colors, practically. But I think. If there was a way to add atmospheres and obviously customise them like you could with the rocky planets, maybe not all the clouds and stuff, but just the atmosphere colour itself and just being able to add an atmosphere, I think that would be really, really cool. So, I mean, just something to keep in mind. I mean, <laughs> I know a lot of us have really wanted it, but yeah, that's just a suggestion, I guess. So, yeah, hopefully... Um yeah, ho hopefully one day. Who knows? But yeah, massive thank you again for everyone who has watched this series. And yeah, I really, really hope you've um, enjoyed it. Because yeah, that obviously takes us to the end. There's no more to show. This is the current version of the game. So yeah, guys, I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's video guys and obviously stay tuned I'll combine all of these um, parts into one big video as well I think that'd be really, really cool so you can just watch it all in one big take as well that'd be really cool so yeah stay tuned for that and yeah I really hope you've enjoyed it um, like I said 30 likes also subscribe for more help us on the journey to 23,000 subscribers as well guys really really means the world all the support you guys have given me and with that all said and done guys make sure you have a great day stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video goodbye